Hi, everybody watching the stream. Thanks for joining us this week. This is David from the Filmmakers Academy team. I just wanted to let you know we're going to get started here shortly. We dropped a message in the chat box, but um, in case you're on your phone or something and you're watching, we're just, um, you know, we were shooting some stuff earlier outside, which will be a part of the extended content that will come later when we're going to turn this all into like a course and all that kind of stuff for you guys. Uh, so you'll see all the breakdown individually of all the different lookup tables that Shane creates and how he does it. Um, and just for the sheer technology aspect of everything, it was easier for us to do this today for you guys in one physical location. So we're in our studio office space and we'll be start starting in the next like five minutes. So if you got to take a little bathroom break or something or grab yourself a, you know, something to eat or drink or whatever you want to do, uh, go run for that and uh, we'll be with you shortly. So thanks for your patience and we're excited. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Thanks guys.
Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Hey everybody, it's David again. I promise you we're moments away. We're just slating our cameras, so we got them for later, and we're going to be coming live. And of course, right as we're about to go live, we have a little technical difficulty with our main camera, so please bear with us. Thanks for your patience, everybody. We're just uh, having a little trouble with the tear deck. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Here is the man of the hour, my good buddy, Shane Herbert. Say hi, Shane. Hey, how you doing, everyone? It's perfect timing, because now we have the leaf blowers and the lawn mowers just blazing outside. So I'm gonna try to speak over those. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for coming uh, and being a part of this Red Raptor LUT creation. Uh, no, it's awesome. Um, first off, right off the bat, I want to thank Keslo Camera for supplying a lot of the camera gear. I want to thank Red for supplying the Raptors. Uh, and I want to also uh, thank Flanders 
uh, for supplying all of our uh, DM220s and uh, 160 monitors, as well as Blue Shape and uh, Aperture and Westcott and Pipe Light. Um, I also want to thank Innovative Carts for uh, setting us all up with all our cool carts. So that's all of our sponsors out of the way. Uh, and now we'll jump into LUT creation. So today what we're going to do is we are going to be designing six different lighting environments where we're using uh, the Raptor sensor with two different lenses. Uh, I'm going with the Optimo, which is the Optimo Primes, Agenu Optimo Primes, as well as the Lights Full Frame Primes on the Raptor. We're shooting 8K, and um, the reason I wanted to do it with two lenses, obviously, if you are prepping a movie or a commercial or music video, and you do have the time to design LUTs for that, you're going to want to do it with the lens that you all decide to shoot the movie on or the commercial or the music video. I'm doing this so you can understand the cross comparison with an Optimo that tends to be a little more magenta and a uh, Leica full frame that happens to be a little more green yellow. So you'll see that and then that is because that lens quality and color is a little different, the LUTs that we're gonna be creating, the quote unquote CDLs. So what's the difference between a LUT and a CDL? Well, the, a LUT is what we are using as our base. Let's call that the show LUT. The show LUT is a LUT that basically takes the Raptor sensor and evens it out beautifully. Nice contrast, you know, but not too extreme contrast, just a real pretty image. Uh, nice mids, nice highlights, all that, okay? So that's what is our show LUT. Now what I do is I make it a little more film bias. So I go in and I add a little more cyan to the skies and I add a little more red, yellow, quote unquote gold into the skin tones. So that's gonna be our base show LUT is this film bias that you can get on the red uh, website. It's one that I've worked with Red and Dan over there to kind of uh, design. It also helps skin tones because it doesn't see so many skin tones. It doesn't see seven to 10 skin tones. It only sees three to four. So that also helps out with uh, complexions. Okay, so that is our base LUT, our show LUT. What we're gonna be doing today is creating CDLs, which are color decision lists. These piggyback on top of the show LUT. So we have our film bias show LUT, and now we're gonna be designing creative LUTs, CDLs, that are maybe warmer, are cooler, or more cyan pushed, or more gold, or really cool in the tonality. That's what we're gonna be uh, creating today. So right now I have our uh, beautiful actors here. I have uh, Soyana and Kira, and they are in a situation where I'm using my Batten lights. So Kurt, if you come with me here, uh, these Batten lights I've designed, uh, I've been building these since 2003 when I did Mr. 3000. They are a line of light. There's 12 85 watt spots. I kind of learned this from working with Conrad Hall. Every light on his set was full spot and he would just scrim it down. So I'm like, hmm, wonder if I create a line of light and every light is full spot. I'm gonna have total control. I'm gonna be able to aim it wherever I go and I don't need flags. I don't need bottomers and toppers because this light, wherever you aim it, that's where it goes. And whatever spills around it feels like ambient light that's just bouncing around in the room. So like, so it's a win-win scenario. Okay. Now, the thing with these lights is most of the time we're only running them around 50% because they're so bright. If we bring these things up to full power, they will be the output of a 5K Fresnel. Yeah, pretty amazing. And it's actually on a 1K dimmer. So this light dimmed around 50% ends up being 2100 Kelvin. So it's very warmish in its tone. 
And what I like about tungsten lights that LEDs really don't do is they don't do big red and yellow shifts, right? When you're looking at your CRI values, you'll see it in the 95 range. You'll also see that red bar in your CIR scale that doesn't go so far. With this, if I scale this CRI value, it's gonna have plenty of red, trust me. And these are the kind of things where you gotta understand the LED lights, what, they can, what their pros are, what their cons are, but good old tungsten, when you turn it on, guess what the CRI value of that is? 100, holy smokes. Okay, so let me go into my CRI just so I can get a reading on this. Ooh, it's 99.2, okay? Now look at that red channel. The red and yellow channel is what we're always looking at in CRI, where it doesn't actually uh, read that so much. So now let me see what this light reads. This is an LED fixture. Okay, which this is a Felix fixture. It's damn good, it's 96.9. But you can see how the red and that blue has shifted a little. So what we want to do is with these, with the batten lights, we want to be able to create a LUT that looks nice and warm, inviting, got that red, yellow, gold that, that kind of comes from uh, much more of a, uh, you know, a practical base sense. So I use these to really emulate practical light. And then I'm also using the Westcots over here that have two different styles of lights. This one has just practical tungsten lights in it that you can buy from Home Depot. And this one here has photo floods. So these are accurate 3200 if I brought those all the way up. So if I brought these up to full, it would be 3200 uh, perfectly Calvin. So I like using all these different types uh, of uh, photo floods because I can emulate them and create, like if I want a real warm look, I'll go to two twelves, which are 150 watts, and then I can bring down that dimmer and make it really nice and warm. But what I'm trying to do right now is take this warmth from the battens and wrap it around with warmth here and then make it a little colder and then make it a little colder. So this cold fill is gonna emulate kind of what's coming from the laptop, which has much more of a 5,600 or 6,000 Kelvin uh, color. That's emulating from there. You can kind of see it in her eyes, uh, you know, as it's in there. And you can see the nice backlight that's happening on Kira. Now, I'm right here. You, are you back up and running, Kurt? Full backlight. Okay, thank God. Damon, is there a reason why you just always are constantly spinning that thing so it flies off? I just wanted you to say my name. Like okay, great. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> okay, so um, now the reason I'm doing a creative LUT for this is because the lights are super warm. So um, let me go back into my color temp so I can um, see where this light is coming in at. 2100 Kelvin, okay? And then this fill here is 2400 Kelvin. And this laptop is 5000 Kelvin. Why did it change? 5150. So we got a nice kind of color contrast. And our bounce here. is so low that I can't read it. Now, hold on. There we go. That's 3,400. So why don't we, uh, John, let's cool this up just a little bit. So give me, uh, go to like 30, uh, go to 4,000 Calvin on that. That's the left one, yeah. Just to make that a little cooler. Okay, so from a creative LUT scenario, what we're doing is obviously our two Raptors 
Uh, we're gonna, we have our slates. Are we set on our slates? Yep. What did we set our color temp to, Marshall? 3,500. 3,500. So basically 1,400 Kelvin different than the backlight and 1,000 Kelvin different than our key light here. So now I'm gonna go over the monitor and take a look at it. Uh, and then we'll hopefully be able to roll soon. You wanna follow me over here, Kurt? Okay. So this is our, our film bias. Uh, and then have you done anything on top of it? No. Okay. So uh, go to a raw. Can you just show no. me what uh, without the film bias would look like? So that's basically our raw file right there. Okay, uh, on both cameras. And now go ahead, there's our film bias on both. So what I would say is I'd want to, uh, let's go uh, warm it up a little more. Yeah, I copy. Yeah, there you go, that's nice. So they go on, or off, and then on with it. Yeah, a little too, uh, take a split the, take a, a third off of this. Uh, that warmth. Yeah. Okay. Oh, too much. Yeah, that's that's nice. Okay. okay. So I'm gonna go off again, then on. Yeah. So do that off and on again, yeah. uh, so Dave can see that. There's off. So there's our blue world, and now we're making it warm. So this is what I would be doing with my uh, LUT creation, right? I'm I'm basically taking. And we are maneuvering the, um, we're kind of swinging the bias uh, or swinging, creating the CDL based on this lighting scenario. So I do them for practical lights. I do them for batten lights. We're going to do a lot of top light. We're going to do all these different things. Uh, so this one is going to be my quote unquote interior batten light uh, scenario. Okay. So, um, how do you think we are on the fill, uh, John? I think you have enough fill. I certainly wouldn't add any more fill. No, I think that's like a nice. Yeah. What would what would you change with the thing? In terms of fill levels? Do you or, think or this is I... too bright all back in I here? Think, I think this. I think this is too bright. That's a that's the blue lights that are in that room. Right. Yeah. I also think this could use uh, everything from here down. Could, could use, use a an, bottom. Could use an, a bottom or a, or a double net at least. Okay. Especially so let's. If we want to say there's any light coming from here. Right. Okay. So let's do that. Let's set a uh, a, a bottomer. Uh, to just take this down, Brendan, just a little bit from here. Okay. Sure. Okay. All right. So he's going to be setting that, and, you know, to control that back here, let's see. No, it wasn't. Uh, we'd have to literally just unplug them. Um, what, what controls this? That's up in the ceiling. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I think it's mostly that that we see clouding the glass. It's mostly this wall being. So while Shane and uh, John Guerra are taking a look and getting some of the things set up, uh, just want to pop in and just this is our studio. This is our space for Filmmakers Academy. You're looking into our podcast studio right now for finding the frame through the glass there and. This is our main studio that John and Shane are it's walking light through. Right and, you know, light we're kind of crammed in here a little bit, but it's flat. pretty nice. We got uh, five Filmmakers Academy members here with us. So for all you guys out there that are watching, you know, keep in mind and look out for those emails from we do things like this from time to time. We can bring people in. Just this environment uh, because that's what uh, we're going to be using the creative LUT for. Uh, and I want to, you know, I'm going to actually turn this computer down. Uh, so, and let's, uh, let's make this just a little more, um, go to like, uh, 4,700. Sure. Okay, there you go. Okay. All right. All right. You might have to undersling it. Yeah.
Okay. All right, let's come up and out a little bit. Okay. There we go. All right. Okay. Uh, all right, swing that back just a little bit. It's in our other camera. You want to pull those lights down? There you go. Maybe a better cut? Or? Yeah, maybe pull those back. Okay. Yeah, we pull them back just a little bit, and then you probably got to come up with the volume a little bit. So that's me pulled back. Okay. His flag in a good place? Yeah, that's looking good. Okay, Let's come up five points on the dimmer. Okay. On me, both? You think that? Let's see. Back wall, All right. sidewall five tubes. Up here. And then I'm Kill that. five up here. Great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Let's see how that's looking. Okay. Now I think we could go uh, a little warmer. Yeah. Thank you. So let's let's add a little more warmth. Yep. Uh, a little more red, yellow, and. Can I do it on this camera? Yeah, that's nice. So I'm gonna go. You wanna go more? No, that's good. Cool. Awesome. I'm gonna buy that on both cameras. Okay, great. Okay, so um, let's uh, let's get we got this all on the slate, yep. So we can roll. Okay, so let me show uh, everyone a slate. Um, so this is something that you want to also do. You know, building LUT creation is like watching paint dry a lot of the time, right? Because you have to be very specific. You have to take the time. You got to dot the I's and cross the T's. So what we're, I like these little um, whiteboards because you can, you know, write a lot more on them than a normal slate. We got the Batten uh, CDL test here. We're at 800 ISO. We've set our white balance at 3,500. Uh, our format is 8K, 50 millimeter. Our shutter 180, 2398. This is lights, lens, and a 2.8. And we see that it's the Red Raptor XL, which is this one here. Okay, so they're all set and we're going to do one camera at a time. The reason we do one camera at a time is because we can slate them. We don't, we're not confused with sticking one slate in and then another slate in. Unfortunately, this is kind of the process of doing it correctly because when you get in the color bay, you want to see this slate come up. And, and what I hate is when people rip the slate out too soon. It's like, I want to be able to read it. And yes, we can freeze the frame, but there's sometimes when you're just going through there, and you're like, okay, wow, that looks really good. You know, what is this? And you can say, oh, wow, yeah, I can see that's white balance is 3,500. Okay, yeah, all right, now uh, let's start to color it. So leave that slate in a good amount so you can uh, take in the acknowledgement of what it is and uh, we can move on from there. Okay, so let us uh let's start this process so um we are going to roll on our v raptor so let's go ahead and Hit. roll Hit. got it great and okay so now ladies uh go ahead and look uh to the left look down the hallway there yeah see i love marshall that batten line on their noses and everything and their face it really uh, brings it out nicely and look how soft that is and how it wraps their their face okay now look away from the key light now you're gonna look over there you see how dark that goes but there's still nice detail there okay now back to uh, you're you're very uh, concentrated and seeing what's going on with this what are you seeing there you watching some TikTok video <laughs> No, she's not. Oh, Kurt, you're back, finally. Damon with his follow focus again, right? Okay, good. Uh, all right. So, um, all right, now let's uh, cut on that. And now we will roll our V-Raptor that has our Agenue Optimo on it. Awesome. Okay, and... Go ahead and look to your left. Get that nice edge on them. That's great. And now look to your right. And back to camera. 
and down to the TikTok video. It's very exciting down there. I don't know what's going on. Okay, so let's cut on that. So now what we've done is we've created a scenario where these bat lights are 2100 and we've been able to balance everything uh, fairly well with doing other different color temps. But what if you wanna use these lights and you don't want them that warm? Well, obviously we could uh, go and crank, you know, lower our white balance and make it 2900 so it makes it more white. Problem is, is when we go there, then our background's gonna go much bluer, so there's all these shifts. So John, let's put a uh, quarter CTB on the baton lights. All right. uh, should be a, bat, uh, a ladder right there and some tape. And what we're gonna do is we're going to cool the baton lights up. So we uh, make it so it's not 2100. We're gonna put quarter on. I kind of put that, didn't I put that tape over there somewhere for you? I, I handed it off to someone. I oh. Hold it for me. So quarter on each, is it? Yeah. Do you have the tape or not? I handed it to one of you gentlemen. Thank you. Yes. You got it? Okay. So if somebody wants to come over here and tear off some pieces of tape for me, that would be very helpful. You want to show them this? Or they know what it is? No, it's all good. Looks like you've been doing this for a while. Don't remind me. <laughs> John and I have been working on music videos. Uh, you know, we started as gaffers together. Uh, he was doing a lot of music videos. He was gaffing. I was gaffing a lot of music videos, and then I started shooting them. And we've been working together since the uh, the late uh, '80s, early '90s. Wow, we're dating the hell out of ourselves, Guerra. I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just so we can uh, kind of take you through everything. So we're putting the half C or quarter CTB on the battens. We have Westcott lights over here that I've kind of taken you through what I have. I got warm practical base lights that you can buy at Home Depot in there. And then I have photo floods in this one. And then we have our blue bounce uh, that's emulating the fill that's coming from our... Uh, our computer monitor onto their faces, okay? And then Marshall was able to go in there and kind of generate a CDL where he warmed that up. So now that we've put our uh, quarter CTB on there, let's see what our color temperature is reading now. Okay, so now we've gone up to 2300 Kelvin. So we're at 2300 Kelvin, where we were at just above 2000. So we've warmed it up or cooled it down 300 degrees. So now let's go back to the monitor and see what that looks like. All right, so how do we feel with that, Marshall, um, in regards to, you want to see it side by side? Her backlight looks a little hot on her. Uh, let's take the, the, the baton lights down, just kill them for one second so we can see what they're doing. There's two dimmers back there. You find it? Jesus Christ, Guerra. Oh, it's because of Kurt and his damn cart. <laughs> Now's a good time to tell you about our sponsors. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to intermittently uh, try to remind Shane that we do want to take questions and question and answer at later points in the day. So if you guys have questions, try to hold on to them 
uh, towards when we get to the question and answer period. We'll let Shane will go through everything. Yeah, uh, which is coming up very quickly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I just want to give everybody that notice that yeah. they'll have a chance, and I'll feed him your questions. Okay, so um, let's come up with the, uh, the furthest backlight one. Other one? Just me? Okay, let's take that down in intensity. Coming down. Down. Ho! Hoing. Okay, and now go on to the next one. I'm at 56. Coming down. No, come up with that one a little bit. Oh, uh, coming up a little. At 70. Okay, good. Hold that. All right. Okay. 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 Nice. <laughs> All right, so let me. Turn the CD off for you on your camera. So I'll flip it off, I'll flip it on. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So the one thing that I love about the Battens is how good it looks on whether it's Caucasian or our darker skin tones. Have them look, look to your left there. Look how beautiful that edge is, sorry, I didn't mean to touch you right there. Uh, you can see that sheen, it just has a great golden feel. And this is what one thing I'm really noticing too with the Raptor sensor compared to the Gemini, the, the warmth that I would see on the Gemini, I'm not seeing as warm in the Raptor, which is a good thing. It's, it's color science is, is very, very robust. So I'm able to really make it nice and warm and rich and it's not falling apart. It's not getting muddy, uh, which is a really great thing. Um, so the quarter, uh, let's go ahead and come back up on the backlight one. Coming up. Coming up, coming up. Coming up. Yep. Okay, that's good. Let me take a look at that. Okay, now um, stop down on the camera a half stop, both cameras. Okay, take that backlight down five points. That's down five. Okay, okay. nice, all right. And then let's come up five on our um, on our key lights. Oh, hold on. Our Westcots. Coming up five on the Westcot. Come on five on each Westcot. Okay. Mm. Five there. Mm. Five there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Now let's see. Come up a little more on that uh, photo flood one. On the photo flood one. Uh, that's just one. There you go. Hey, Shane. Yeah. Just getting a couple questions. One I think it's important uh, to throw in real quick. What's our base LUT that we're working with right now? Is there a base LUT? Yeah. So our our base LUT is um, our base LUT is a film bias LUT that's supplied by Red. You can go to their Red website and you'll see a film bias LUT. Uh, and what that is doing, that is our base LUT, is our show LUT, let's say. And that is taking, um, just making the Raptor look nicely balanced, and then it's skewing the blue to a little more cyan, and it's skewing skin tones to be a little more golder, and not so many uh, details of, of shades of skin. So it doesn't have nine shades of skin, it's got like four shades. So it, uh, you don't see all the gray and imperfections and all that kind of stuff. Very cool. And then just for people watching, just so you know, the, there's the lookup table, obviously, on the cameras we're using. We're shooting all on Red's, you know, uh, wep uh, Dragon weapon sensor uh, for our, you know, broadcast here. And these are LUTs that Shane, we're using LUTs that Shane created for some of his movies. So that's what you're seeing on those cameras. All right, let's go l open back up a third on the cameras. All right. Okay, so let's have this one. So lighting wise, let's just put that uh, batten with uh, quarter CTB. Okay. 
So we know that we've uh, added that. Okay, great. Okay? All right. And then from this, we'll go into a uh, 100 millimeter for our close-up. What I like to do when I'm doing uh, these uh, CDLs is I don't like to just do the wide. I also like to get in close, also look at skin tone, really see how that uh, base. So you want a wide and a tight. And then you, once you get the wide looking great, and then you go and you transfer that uh, CDL over to the tight, if it's not looking so good, you know, you, you got to balance those. So I try to do both scenarios so it gives me that range. Okay. All right. Nice. So let's roll on this. Got it? Okay. And go ahead and look to your left. And look away from the light. Look to your right. And back to camera and down to the computer. What's going on there? Okay. Great. Okay. Next one. Going to our V Raptor with the Ajnu Optima. Got it? Okay, here you go. And look to your left and to your right and back to camera and down to the screen. Great. Okay, let's cut that. Now let's go to 100 mil and uh, let's take some questions, please, uh, David. Sure. Um, yeah, I wasn't ready. <laughs> um, I think somebody, someone asked a question uh, about what does CT, CBT stand for? Was that just a typo on the board? Oh, did he did he write CBT instead of C? Maybe it was supposed to be CTB for color temperature. Hey, what are you thinking? No, he wrote CTB. Okay, maybe somebody just misunderstood. Oh. <laughs> no big deal. Yeah, um, so quarter CTB, quarter blue, eighth blue, half blue, mm -hmm. full blue. Yeah. yeah, color correction, just like half CTS or CTO. Yeah, so gotcha. it's, it swings the, uh, the warmth or the cold. Sure, uh, okay. The light. So we got a question, a first question in the streams caught up to us. Um, Richard asks, how do you correctly account for interior, exterior, night, day difference during your LUT? CDL creation. Well, Richard, that's what this is all about. But they didn't get to see the first part of what we shot this morning, which will oh. become member content. So I'll let you. Right. So one of the things we did this morning is we went outside and we did uh, side lit, back lit, and overcast. Those are the three things that you're going to be thrown at when you're doing exterior work. You're always going to have some side light going on. You love backlit because that always looks great. And then you have times when the clouds come in and you got to deal with overcast. So that's what we did this morning. Uh, so we did those uh, LUTs. And now we're doing more of the creative lighting LUTs in here for lighting environments of like when you walk into a, uh, you know, fluorescent lit office space, which we're going to be doing in a little while where all the fluorescents are on, but they're all warm white or they're all cool white. Well, I tend to do creative uh, CDLs on those as well. So that way, if I go into a, a space that I don't have the money or the time to be able to change out all the tubes, I go uh, to my warm white or my cool white uh, LUT that I've created, and it takes all that green out and neutralizes it and makes it look good. So these, this is what we're doing is the creative LUTs. Uh, now for interiors, but when we were outside and here's the thing a lot of time my exterior LUTs work interior as well uh, It's just that sometimes when I'm going for these warmer tones or cooler tones It doesn't have uh, the robustness to be able to handle that so that's why I like doing creative looks for the type of lighting that I do on on movies Cool. I'll get another one. Uh, when this comes from from Dan, Dan asks, 
when does this workflow happen? Do you do it once per movie? How final are these compared to the color correction you're doing post? Great question, Dan. So every movie I try to build uh, CDLs. So what I do is once the director and I have decided on a lens and a camera, once that is all decided, then right before we go into production, I usually do a day of LUT creation. Basically what you're witnessing right now. We're, we usually book a sound stage. Uh, I set up all these different creative uh, um, lighting scenarios for interior and we go outside and we shoot our backlit, sidelit, and overcast. So this is something, once the lens is chosen, once the camera is chosen, you do this right before you go into production. Now the cool thing with this is I wanted to build myself a very robust library that would uh, handle glass that tends to be a little more magenta, like the Optimo, and glass that tends to be a little greenish yellow, which is the lights, that there's a lot of different lenses that fit those portfolios. So what I thought is, why don't I shoot with these two different lenses? And those LUTs that we create off of this are gonna be a great brick and mortar for you to be able to, once you have, uh, you know, for me, once I have these raw files, I'm able to swing them and do whatever I want per movie. So I can always go back to these files. And I kind of bring these files with me as a cinematographer, not just the LUTs that I've created based on, you know, maybe a LUT for holiday was different than the LUT that I created for safety that was different than the LUT that I created for Musica, right? All these CDLs. So based on that, I can always go back to this raw footage that I've shot now and still be able to design LUTs off of that uh, many, many movies down the road. Obviously, if I'm shooting on the same camera. If lenses here and there, it's a very slight tweak, but as long as I'm shooting with the Raptor, uh, I'm, uh, these LUTs are gonna be great. Now, I think that's our, those will be our questions for the moment, but I'm just gonna throw out there, I think we just, it's good to touch on the fact that like, for some of those people who are, they're new to LUTs and they're building LUTs, it's like, the idea is something you and Dave Cole have stressed in a lot of the content that we create and talking about your relationship with your colorist and stuff like that. It's the input stream and the output stream. You're not making LUTs with a Red Raptor that you're going to put on Sony Venice. You're not making LUTs with a, uh, Alexa and putting it onto a Komodo. Like it, It's important to make it with the native of the camera you're going to shoot with. Yeah, that's why these movie LUTs that you see online, uh, there's no... There's nothing. Was it done with Rec. 709? Was it done with uh, a different color space? You know, there's four or five, six different color spaces. Uh, you know, what cameras was used? What, what, uh, there's so many things that go into it that you got. That's why I take the time to be super specific per camera, per lens. Cool. All right. Take it away, Shade. Keep going. We'll get back to more questions later as we keep. Uh, okay, great. Through. All right. So now we have our 100s on. How are we looking, Sam? Oh yeah, that's looking nice. Okay, uh, let's uh, stop down a half. I want to just look at what that looks like. Seems like we're getting flared too. That's what I'm working on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's looking good on a camera. Okay. You can see how the Optimo is just a little softer in the transitions from uh, the mids compared to that. You know, just ever so slightly. It just looks a little creamier. And the magenta, obviously, in the warming that up. Okay. Uh, so Yana, go ahead and look down at your laptop for a second. Okay. And then look over to the light just a little bit that direction. Great. Just to throw it in there, there's, you know, some people asking questions. Uh, yeah. you know, right now, well, I'm just going to talk over top of Shane oh. right now. Like if I'm showing you guys, you know, here's John Guerra and Marshall Shane's the IT Marshall's working in live grade. So right now he's taking, 
you know, an SDI feed from the camera, which is 10-bit going into 10-bit monitors on the yeah. Flanders DM220s. So he's using live grade to manipulate that image as I show it to you here. You know, so that's where he was able to toggle the log and things like that. When he goes into post, he's going to get out of live grade because he's going to work with the raw files. He's either going to work in something like Luster or he's going to work in Resolve, uh, you know, from a post standpoint, whether it's going to be, you know, if you have a DIT that can make LUTs for you or it's going to be your colorist, you know, on a bigger scale. Like this is where eventually we're going to get to a place where we're going to take these LUTs. We're going to work with David Cole over at... Um, Photochem? He's a Photochem. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Shane and, and Dave are going to work on these LUTs for Shane's next movie. Yeah. And here's the thing, you know, what are the... I think about how I started out as a cinematographer. Everything was basically, I'm trying to figure stuff out and, you know, failing a lot of times as I'm, you know, coming up the ladder. I, if I had a resource like Filmmakers Academy when I was first starting out, oh my God, it would have been, you know, just a rocket ship. Uh, because it's like, what we try to do is show you everything that's essential about the filmmaking process and you know that's why we have uh five of our members that came today wave everyone <laughs> you you having a good time back there sorry that we uh pushed you in the corner but uh, i hope you're uh yeah they've been helping us out all day uh you know this is a very collaborative process and you know what we're trying to do is create uh, content that really uh, sets you apart from the pack and really kind of dials you in to what is essential to being a, a great filmmaker, not just cinematography. We're, we're adding all the different disciplines within the Filmmakers Academy. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we have our 100 mils on, and this is like what I said. We've done our wide, and now we're coming in for our close up. And we wanna, and this is where you can really look at the lens difference as well. Right off the bat, John was saying he thinks the Optima is, uh, Optimo is more um, uh, natural looking than the Leica, right? So these are kind of things, that's, that's his personal preference, but this is the feeling that lenses uh, deliver. And that's why I call them the soul of your movie. The cameras have become, the cameras used to be like this. They're so close in how they're delivering the image now that now it's all about the glass and the glass to be able to deliver that soul. And here's okay. for you guys. Here's the the uh, Optimo lenses, the Ajuno Optimo primes. And then quick cut, Looks those are, these are the lights control. primes. So I'm going to cut back and forth so you guys can see a little bit of what Shane's talking about. Okay, all right, let's slate up. We'll go with our XL first. Okay, and we've added the quarter CTB here. I always point because sometimes I'm in the edit bay and I forget about all these things. So I'm like, point to tell me that we changed stuff. <laughs> okay, and go ahead and look to your left and look back to your right. And back to camera. Okay, great. Cut. All right. Now let's go with our. Let's see if that does it this time. Let's see if it doesn't cut at the same time with this computer. All right. I just saw a question pop in. I'm just going to throw out there. We're not putting, okay. Shane's not putting any filtration in front of these lenses either. So no. there's no promise being used. It's no. clean. That's the only way you can test it without influencing the LUT, you know, and uh, go from there. Got it? Got it? Yep. Yeah. No filtration being used, uh, not, uh, we want, this wants to be as clean as possible. And obviously, if you did stuff where you needed, I think you're out, right? Your, your thing has popped off. I, I need you over here. Um, you know, obviously, we're doing more creative LUTs here. When I was outside, I was doing everything at 5,600 Kelvin. So, you know, that was our daylight balance. This we're messing all around because this is much more of the creative process. So it's not me trying to match 3200 specifically and then design a LUT based on that. This is more of the creative uh, CDL building that I then put on top of that film bias show LUT. Okay, 
All right, so we've done these. So now what I would love to do is let's just take off the quarter CTB. All right. Okay, we'll remove the quarter CTB on the close up. Thank you so much for grabbing that ladder. And we'll untape those batten lights. Any other questions, Dave? Oh, let's see. Let me look at the old question list. Hmm. Thank you so much, everyone, for being a part of this uh, yeah. and signing up for this. Uh, you know, we've we've been working around the clock for the last week to get ready for all this. And, uh, you know, I, I thank my crew for for everything that they're doing to to bring this uh, live stream to all of you. Come on, Guerra, no faster. No questions yet. <laughs> we'll hold we'll hold the question. We'll wait for <laughs> questions at we get to this guy. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, Does no, John need a bigger great. ladder? Is that the problem? Awesome. Okay, so now let's go back to the monitor here. Uh, monitor here, and we'll see. Uh, so let's come down on the side light one, the one that's like more three quarter back, just like five points. There you go. Thank you. Hold on. Now, uh, flash the one that's the backlight. Okay, take that down 10. There you go. Okay, bring it up five. Okay, five. Okay, nice. While Shane's talking, just to throw it in there, the stuff you guys are seeing hanging in the ceiling, like the gridded top light and stuff like that, those are going to be some different looks we're going to get to as we keep shooting throughout the day. Okay. I mean, we can't give away all the secrets in the first five minutes. we got to keep you guys around. you got to uh, check it all uh, out, right? That's a part of, Left you know, saying down. we're doing what, f I think five different looks here inside or four or something. I don't know. He's going to, we're going to do like 12. So there'll be a ton. But so this okay, is great. right now we're still uh, Come up on the backlight, uh, five points. Okay. Coming up five. There you go. This one. Okay. Nice. All right. So now we take the quarter CTB off. You did. Yep. Great. Okay. All right. Let's tilt down just a little bit. Oh, okay. I was just holding that card. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll bring this down a little bit. How's that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Let's roll on this. Okay. Roll the hey, racket. Shane, talk about the importance of, you, you know, what do you do in ND-wise between interior and exterior? You know, I think that's something to throw out here because we're obviously not using ND in here. Yeah, so the cool ships. thing was is when we were outside today, we were able to take advantage of the uh, beauty of the Raptor XL having its internal NDs. And it's unbelievable. A third stop, or is it quarter stop, right? Uh, it can't go down to a quarter stop. Yet. Yeah, so it can go quarter stop, which is absolutely insane. I mean, that is how you dial... That's how you dial stuff in, is this quarter stop increments, which is very important. Uh, but, you know, with most NDs, you only have one stop increments, and maybe there are some half stop NDs. But outside, on the V-Raptor, we had our Tiffin uh, 2.1s on there, and then we were doing seven stops worth of neutral density on the Raptor XL. Okay, here we go. Let's roll. As we're rolling, just to people okay. ask a question about the batten lights, the balls that Shane's using are some old school, like 85 watt left. Phillips spots. And they're kind of hard to get, right. but they're really, really warm when you and dim them down. Back to things camera. Like that. So. What's on the monitor? Okay. And Basically, cut. I'm a Home Depot, but it's hard to find now. All right. 
and Raptor V Raptor. Here we go. Good. Nice. Okay. And look to your left. Now you're blocking Soyana a little bit here with the light. There you go. Nope, you're blocking her again. Move forward. <coughs> Move forward a little more. There you go. Nice. Okay. Uh, okay, now back. Look to your right. Okay, and then back to camera. Okay, and cut on that one. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up for a top light look scenario. So we're going to be going with our blanket light, cream source blanket light that's right above me. And then we also have our pipe light uh, over on the right side. So let us uh, blow this all up for a minute and uh, I'll be talking you through uh, what we're going to be doing. Okay, so let's kill the Westcots. Kill the Battens, please, John. Yes. And now's a good time to talk about our sponsors. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do a little talking shame while you're doing a little working. So we're obviously going to be changing out just for lighting scenarios and stuff. So uh, the stream will stay up. We're just going to stay on this camera for a little bit. Um, we're going to fix. We're having some technical difficulties with some of our gear, uh, as everybody does. So we're working on that. But, um, yeah, we got our setup. We're shooting with three dragons right now or four you're looking at the fourth one and a couple gopros to grab some different things over the dit tent which i've shown a couple times this this bad boy um you know we're going to turn this into content later you know it's going to be something that you guys will be able to use within the platform and you can go through each scenario and see you can kind of use shane's techniques and the different things that he's talking about to build your own luts but then you'll actually have the ability to have the luts through your membership so you can use them if you like or you can play with them you know and whatnot uh, with, you know, DSMC3 bodies for, you know, Komodo and, and uh, Raptor XL, Red P Raptor, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, thank you guys for hanging out with us. So keep your questions coming. And thanks to Red and Flanders and Blue Shape Batteries and Pipe Light, MBS Studios for donating a bunch of gear. All these guys really pitched in to help make this possible for us to – create this fun content and to put the live stream together. And thanks to our, our friend Gene Martin at audio department for helping us out with sound. Thank you for the guys, the crew and Sam, Butt, our focus puller and Marshall Hendershot. There's the back of Marshall's head, John Guerra, Eric Gaffer, Brendan real key grip. Um, all guys local here in the Los Angeles area that are uh, really great friends of all of us. And we thank you and thank you to my crew. Helping out here, Will Hand, first AD. I do have a first AD here on the job for some of those. I saw those jokes early on. You guys saying we needed a first AD, and this is what happens with DPs running the show. I'm a DP myself. I do shoot as well as I'm a part of the team here at Filmmakers Academy. Um, and, yeah. Thank you to Damon Moser, who's a focus puller uh, on the movie, or Kurt Walrath, who's operating. Damon's yelling in my ear right now on our headset. He's not missing focus. The tilted nucleus rod support is not liking the rod it's on, so it keeps hopping off. So that's what happens when you go from 19 mil to 15 mil with a spacer that's not well built. So it is what it is. Anyways, thank you guys, and uh, keep watching. Oh, and Brendan Sweet right. and Steve DiPolitano okay. also operating so camera. Thank you guys. Lights at all uh <laughs> let's get this thing out of here uh and we'll bring uh let's clear this out and that uh that chair please no we'll need that thank you All right, okay, Kira and Soyana. All right, let's start lensing up, guys. Where are we? Right underneath this light. Okay, perfect. If you have a project on the 
no. Okay, why don't you get on the dimmer and take that thing down? Uh, cut it to 50%. Hey, thank you guys all for this. And, um, for a few people that are asking online about if this is the stream is going to remain up online. It's going to remain up in the Filmmakers Academy platform for members. Um, we will have it as the full stream, you know, so members can check it out after this. Uh, we wanted to kind of invite everybody, give people a chance. There's people watching online right now that are, you know, prospective members. Yeah. We hope you join the family and you check it all out. Um, and then we're going to make it into smaller, uh, bite-sized, individual good. chunks and content that will get released later in the year. Because uh, we're going to, you know, try to clean up my mistakes as I'm jumping around Let's and, 30, you know, missing, missing angles and whatnot. Okay. Let's see what this is. All right, you ready, David? Yeah, let's, uh, hey, Kurt, you bring the Moby back in for me, pal? Get him back in. So He's checking. Great. Give me one second, Shane. We'll bring the, the movie back that? in to follow you guys around. For, are you, do, you, do you control color temperature? Yeah, this is the tungsten. Yeah. So oh, this okay. you want to go up to there, and then you've got your master oh, there to okay. dim. Which one are we okay. starting with, Shane? Is this the pipe light, or is this the uh We're cream starting source? with the cream source blanket light. Okay, cream source blanket light. The cream source blanket light is full RGB. Uh, can do all kinds of crazy colors. It's a little heavy, um, but so go ahead and bring up a little. We've got a drop ceiling up, that's in right? our studio space, and this is yeah, clipped into the drop ceiling so with I number three, you know, grip clips. That's that's it. So there's a frame, the light embedded in the frame. Shane's put some duvetine around it oh. to skirt it, and then it's thrown up in the air. And then the control box, uh, Sweeney, did you have that control uh, box? You show that to me, one line. Steve. There we go, Steve. And Steve's got the control box. There's John's hands over there with the control box. Perfect. And, you know, they can adjust all the different things from there. So it is, oh. you know, it's powered via a cable and whatnot. Line. So I'm not. Is this DMXable, Shane? What's that? Is this uh, light fixture DMXable? Yes, this is DMXable. Okay, so that's 3200 right there. So basically, w um, what I wanted to be able to do is set the, because this isn't our batten kind of warm, creative vibe. This is maybe, you know, um, you have a lot of top light environments in a lot of, of what you create. Top light is awesome because it enables you to move the camera around wherever you want. You don't have any shadows. So what we want to do is create a uh, LUT for this. Uh, CDL for the top light scenario and we'll do it with and without fill light because uh, so when we're on the wide we know we're not going to be able to put a circle bounce or, or anything on this so uh, this way uh, we can bring the circle bounce in to assist and we're going to be looking at two different uh, light qualities we have our cream source blanket light and then we'll move over to our pipe light all right so value wise oh yeah that looks really cool um, I wonder if we, wonder if we threw, uh, some medium blue green on those back there, you know, so that goes more cyan, uh, you know, I can't believe that's 3200. I know. It looks so great in the, yeah, on them, but yeah, we definitely make the background a little more. Get it away from them a little, because this, this doesn't look that far from them to me. No, I know, but it's 3200. But you can see with the, see the lights uh, lens is a little cooler with its green tones, where you can see it's got a little more warmth over there. Plus it falls way off. Yeah. I actually like, on this application, I, I'm enjoying this lens. Right. Quite a bit. Yeah. All right, so do we have, uh, do you want to throw some, you have cyan? Yeah. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to change the color temp of the background tubes a little bit just so we can get a little more color contrast. And I'll be right back.
Hey, William, I'll have Shane dive into your question about, you know, the LUTs being based more on lighting scenarios or being based on uh, storyboard or the story and the characters, things like that. It's a little bit of a combination of both. You know, you, you're kind of, we're making somewhat general LUTs and looks right now. And you think about it too. It's like it gets you into a pocket, gets you into a space before you go to post. You know, it's like you're not going to just take this LUT, slap it on, and be done with it, so to speak, all the time. Yeah, it's possible. You can do that. But the idea being that this can create a relationship to the story, creates a relationship to the characters, you know, but it's also an environment. Scissors? I got those. Oh, nice. Okay. Ready? Yeah. We can just lay it over the top. We don't have to make it so sexy. Slice across. All right. Are you still up, Dave? Yeah, we're still up. Okay, I'm good. So, you guys gel. yeah, basically, we're we're gonna make this gel a little more, um, you know, cyan tones in the background. So there's a little more shift of color uh, difference. Nice work. Okay, one more, and we'll be ready to go. Do we have any questions, Dave? Let me take a look. I've been trying to just kind of answer some questions. I think we're okay. We can keep going. So, you know what? Kind of expand upon what I, I kind of was trying to answer the question for you, but, you know, talk about the process of you're creating LUTs for the purpose of what? The environment? The story? Combination of both? How yeah. do you approach it? What's your Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm creating... Uh, lookup tables and, and CDLs that create different environments. So if I walk into a fluorescent lit office, I want to be able to create a LUT that's going to handle warm white fluorescent, cool white fluorescence, or LED fluorescence. Okay, that's definitely an environment. The Batten one that you just saw was much more of a creative environment where it's going to be much more practical based, only lighting with practicals. So I want to be able to see if I'm gonna light with just practicals, what kind of lights can I use to augment that to then deliver that look? Uh, so it's a little mix of both. I like to try and set my LUTs up where I'm able to handle all different lighting environment scenarios as well as some creative ones. On Holidate, we had a very specific look for uh, the Halloween sequence in Holidate where I was using really, really deep golds and really deep cyans. And all my other LUTs just didn't respond to that. Like uh, my day exterior, my overcast LUTs that I had built just did not respond. I couldn't get the saturation of color. So I did a whole lookup table, a CDL, that was just based on that Halloween party. So these are the type of things that you have to do based on the story and uh, based on, you know, what, what that script is telling you, what, what that lighting environment is. And I try to emulate it as much as possible uh, in these, the, these LUT creations like we're showing you right now. And I do a ton of top light. So I wanna make sure if this was kind of a nightclub vibe that I could move around them as they're dancing or whatever and create this kind of tonality. And then I can swoop in with a circle bounce and be able to bring this up for the close-ups. So all of a sudden now that contrast is just beautiful, uh, not so steep, right? So now we can really lift them up. Uh, not yet, not just yet. Okay, so what are we thinking back here? Well, I'm not getting any of the cyan feel. It's just looking just right, up. that's because of the film bias, uh, I bet. So if we went to a, a LUT that was... I'm going to go around this corner. I'm going to go to this, the normal medium soft one. It's very slight, but if you look at the blues, it's such a yeah, bluish magenta, and it's going to go mean, up there. That's not the intention when you put that gel on that tube. The intention is... Yeah, to see it there. Like that. <laughs> so go go to a normal, uh, like, the get the film bias let out of there and just yeah. go. There's that. I'm going to match it on this one. You see a lot of magenta in there. Yeah. 
then that's not what I see to camera. I don't even see to my yeah, eye. Exactly. So. So. I know that like Diane was talking to good books in the visual medium. So it's kind of for whatever reason. Yeah. I don't really understand why, but should be able to see it. But it was funny because we were able to see the cyan tubes. Pan over to the right, will you? Uh, any camera, r the right one. Pan over and see those. See those tubes are somewhat cyan. Somewhat. I mean, I dimmed them way down. They're still glowing. Right. right. That's about as low as I can go. Okay. I just can't get the color out of them, and I can't. Yeah. I mean, I understand not getting the color out of the tube. Okay, but I don't understand why I can't. Okay. So go to 5600 on the Raptor just for the yeah. heck of it. You want it on this one? Can you, can you take a look on that one? Yeah, see, there, there it you goes. Go. Yeah. Right. And so now we're getting the cyan. So now go. I can, I can add more daylight into there to balance <laughs> them to that if you want, you know. Because now it's a little too warm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So go uh, do 4800 for a second. See, there, there's that nice cyan. Okay. So now we'll, we'll um, make some daylight in here. Yeah, but let's say, I mean, I see where we're going with this because obviously we want to be able to generate that cyan that I'm seeing to camera. But right. now I'm seeing what is there is, is way too warm, um, you know, based on getting the right cyan tone in the background. Right. So I don't know if we want to be chasing that when... In reality, we want to be <coughs> chasing the skin tone. <laughs> well, instead. I don't know. It doesn't look bad. I mean, if I mix some daylight in there, it wouldn't look Yeah, bad. let's I mean, do that. So, uh, <laughs> well, the cool thing is, let's see, we're at uh, 4,800 Calvin. So now let's uh, let's go. Give me uh, 4,200 here. Copy, 4,200. No, no, you no, stay no, at 4,800. Copy. That's I'm, for me. So you mix your daylight in. I'm going to come in a little. Coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. Coming up. It's the monitor. Okay. Coming up. I'm coming up. That's full daylight right now. That's full daylight, full tungsten right now. All right. That's 4,000 Calvin. Okay. Okay. So that's 800 different than. Okay. Now bring the master down. Coming down on the master. Coming down, coming down, coming down. Oh. Okay. Coming back up a little. And coming up a hair. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, that's looking good. Okay, so let's uh, set our light. Uh, we're going to say is at 4,000 Kelvin on this, uh, Sam. So our top light is 4,000 Kelvin. And let's also uh, detail out that we uh, we put uh, medium blue green on the tubes in the background. It's a good example of uh, in this kind of in this in this filmmaking environment that no matter what it says there or what it says here, you know what it says here and what it says here, or what your mind tells you, what you see is what you get. Exactly. So that's what it's going to be, no matter what you. What, no. Numerically, no matter what you think should make sense, <laughs> forget it. <laughs> I know. That's that's the picture it's gonna right. everyone's gonna see. So yeah, good absolutely. Thing to remember. No, and that's uh, right off the bat. The minute we went into more of a, because what was happening is those are daylight tubes right. that we're then putting medium blue green on, right. so it's not seeing the medium blue green because we were so low in our color temperature. Right, the minute we started coming up to get rid of some of that blue influence, mm -hmm. you started to get the cyan into it all. Oh well, and we could have spun the color temperature on those tubes. Yes, we could have spun them to tungsten or closer to tungsten. And right, left, and probably left and focus and done it that way, balanced it that way. Right. Instead. You think that's worth uh, going through the process of doing? Uh, if you want to look at it, I, why not? And yeah, we can see what our difference is here. I I agree. Sorry, Brendan. Uh, so. Let's flip these things because I think they're at uh, daylight, right? Okay. Yeah. No, because we're still trying to get this. Yeah, thank you though very much. Mm -hmm. Oh, here they are. Where's the, uh, where's the little? Right there. Tungsten. Oh, these don't spin. These don't have the. Uh, 
You can't the, bury them completely, no. right? Okay. Yeah. That's so that's a perfect that's example of kind of the, the measure of the art and the science okay. kind of mixing together. Right now, Shane and John are taking the time to dial in the textures of the detail of the light in the background to look for the color separation that Shane's trying to create without just going, oh, I'll just swing it in camera. Now I've got yeah, one color right, but then the rest great. of it's wrong, you know, and okay. it doesn't. So, so it's doing it with gels and lighting and all that kind of stuff. It's all part of it. So we can see what that does. Right, going back on the cameras. See, it's still, it's still not getting there. Okay. Well, now well, let's do this. So now, now get the get the blue back in the tubes, and let me adjust the top light. Let's see what, how much difference that is. So, what we so uh, go to uh, four thousand Kelvin on the camera. Yeah, four thousand. Because it's still slow. Oh, there, there we go. There we go. So okay. there's a nice cyan. All right. Now, how about that? How about that? And this should feel, that's nice because now we have the balance. This is 4,000 on the camera and 4,000 on the top source. And we're getting the nice cyan tones. Yeah. Okay. So basically, what we were able to do is we went back there, and these are the kind of the little tweaks and everything that, that you end up doing. So... Those colt tubes, those aren't asteras, those are colts. They're four feet long and they either have daylight or tungsten. So what we did is we took them out of daylight mode, put them into tungsten mode, and then put the medium blue green on it. And then when we put it at 4,000 Kelvin, which this is at 4,000 Kelvin, now that we switched it to tungsten, it looks really nice in regards to the, the balance. You're getting that nice cyan shift back there. Okay. Just to throw out really quick, on top of that, somebody asked a question why we're not using RGB yeah. tubes and things like that. It's it really just our our partners, you know, MBS. We're not trying to. They're obviously loaning us things from time to time, and you know, we're kind of at their uh, what's available to them, and you know, we want to make it easy for them. And we're using Colt LED tubes, which are a bicolor tube only. You know, so then that's why we're gelling them with Roscoe Cine Gel. But obviously, we wouldn't gel an RGB tube if shame where to go that route exactly and and a lot of times what i find is that even because you're doing a lot of these like when i'm doing a film bias lut and i'm swinging that cyan and i'm adding that red yellow gold gold is uh very difficult to get you can get orange but you can't get gold and cyan we just saw is very difficult to get so by uh, these are the kind of things that I tend to like using gel still. I know everyone is LED crazy and be able to pop all this stuff, but I'm telling you, you cannot get the saturation from an LED that you can get with gel because the most of the LED fixtures don't have lime and they don't have the, the lavender chip, and, right? Or the, only a few of them have a double red chip. Right? Or amber. Or a lot amber. of them don't have amber. So yeah. it's like you're dealing with when you just have an RGB white, you're not able to get amber. You're not going to get gold. If you don't have the, the lime and the uh, lavender chip, you're not able to get the super saturations on the cyans and the deep greens and all that. So it's technology. We will eventually have all these LEDs and, and mixing in, and we'll probably get to CRI values that are 100. We're on our way there. Uh, it's just a matter of time. But right now, in this transitional phase, I find that I use a lot of gel where everyone was like, why don't you just do an, uh, you know, use an LED and put it to cyan? Well, because I like that. Okay. All right. Exactly. Um, <laughs> So uh, this is looking really nice. Um, let's, uh, let's roll on this, Sam, and then we'll come in and add our fill card on the next one. So on this one, ladies, what I want to do is have you look straight up into the light so we get that godlike light, you know, you're like, no. coming from above, and then we'll have you look left and right and stuff, okay? Nope. <laughs> okay, great. All right. So go ahead and uh, look down, look at camera for me first. Okay, good. And now look up into the light. Uh, look at that in their eyes, beautiful. Okay, now look to your left. And look to your right. And back to camera. 
Okay, now what I'm going to do is in this, we're going to add, obviously we'll, we'll see it because I'm going to put it in front of camera and now we're doing the circle bounce. You get on this, Brendan, for me? Yeah. So I can kind of look at the monitor and we'll dial that in. Okay, now take it away. See everyone where it's just lifting that nice under Soyana. So I'm seeing the detail. I now see separation between her chin, uh, the light that's, that's uh, coming down on her chin uh, and hitting here. Now I'm able to see that. Uh, without that, I'm not seeing this transition. This is just going black. So I'm not seeing her beautiful chin shape. It's just falling off because where the light is. And with Kira, it's lifting those undertones and filling that in uh, nicely. So let's, um, well, we're still rolling, right? Yep. Okay, great. All right, nice. Now look up for me. Okay, and then look to your right. And look to your left. Look at each other. Smile. <laughs> okay. Uh, and cut. All right. Now we'll go with the next one. And we'll do it with and without that, uh, Brendan. Okay. Here we go. V Raptor blazing. Nice. Okay. Just a reminder we're jumping between both cameras because the A camera has the lights primes on it, the and B camera has the Ajinu optimal up. primes. And look to your left. Oh, you finally did that right, Soyana. And look into your right. <laughs> Look to your right now. <laughs> okay, and back to camera. <laughs> okay, and the white card is in. Very nice. And now bring it in. Here's in. Okay, a little too much on Kira. Favor Soyana's side a little more. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Okay, all right, and cut. Okay, nice. All right, now let's uh, put the 50 mils on. While we're doing the 50 mils, let's uh, answer some questions, David, if you have any. Um, yeah, uh, Andreas asked earlier about the process of working with your colorist, and do you guys ever, do you, you know, do you ever have any influence over what kind of software and things like that your colorist uses, or does that aid you to know like what you can do in Resolve versus Luster or some of the others out there? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, who is this from? This is from Andreas. Andreas. Hey, thank you so much. Great question. So, yeah, I mean, you want to know what Pogel does compared to Luster, compared to, you know, uh, what's that other one? Light, North Light, um, yeah, compared to DaVinci, right? There's like four or five kind of color correcting platforms. I have, it, it really is what the colorist wants because if the colorist wants da vinci i want to go with da vinci because i know that he or she is going to be the most proficient and time is money i want somebody that's going to be as quick as possible be able to give me the time to balance the movie as quick as possible and then get in there so i can do all my creative like funnels of light and and uh you know circles, uh, ovals, eggs to be able to bring out, uh, you know, faces. Uh, I've even on like We Are Marshall, I went for a very kind of golden tonality uh, throughout that movie. And when I went in the golden tonality, it made uh, Matthew McConaughey's eyes go gray. So I had a my colorist create these eyes, these little shapes and we moved him, and then we brought his blue eyes back on every single shot. So these are the kind of things that no matter how much you, when you do these big shifts of, of color tonalities, uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes along with it. And one of the things that Mick G told me, he goes, Matthew McConaughey's eyes have to be blue. That is his, that's what sucks women in. And I'm like, okay, no problem. So we ended up doing these little circles the whole time. Got one more question that I think is always kind of your favorite to answer. I know you're a big fan of Hollywood Square, so circle always beats the square. We got a question from Thomas wanting to know why the circle bounce? Why is it circle, not square? Oh, that's a great one. Let me see that circle. 
Where'd that circle bounce go? So the cool thing about circle bounces, and this is, I make them in all different sizes. This is a four foot. I do three foot, two foot, one foot circle bounce. And I put all different types of materials on them. So this has bleach muslin, which is not reflective. It's a fabric, so it doesn't have a sheen angle. So it's very soft. Beadboard has a slight reflective, but it's pretty damn soft as well. So beadboard is soft, muslin is even softer. Then uh, I have, uh, hand me a couple more of those back there, circle bounces. That one's, uh, yeah, this one's, so this one's butcher paper. So when I'm doing, uh, when I'm matching practical light that is really warm, like candle light, I'll pound my lights into this and, and it bounces off this butcher paper. It looks so good. It's just so nice, warm and golden in tonality, like a candle light. Now, the reason I do the circle is look at the reflection in the, her eyes. It looks so much more natural. And if I didn't, if I did more like this, uh, so like look at Kira's eyes, see how that circle looks a lot better than a square. Now, who can get a close-up of that? Uh, I could get a close-up in the Raptor if you didn't oh, block the Oh, the Raptor. Camera. Okay, you, good. You know hero Let me come from yeah. this side. So let's go Raptor X XL, David. Raptor XL, you got it. Okay, so there I have the, uh, oh, but didn't we just put 50s on? Give me a 135. Yeah, let's go with 135 so we can. Uh, I think I 200 right there, too. 200, yeah, get, get, get silly. Oh, I think on uh, Active Valor, you had a Kevlar uh, wrap. <laughs> active valor yeah boy um i tell you on active valor i had i would do handheld camera and they were doing full loads uh, out of their uh hks and m16s and i was wearing two fern pads uh that we cut holes in and i looked like a poncho and i would literally battle back and i had all my arms coated with like i had thick uh sweating my ass off in mexicali but i had like two sweatshirts on gloves and this uh two fern pads just taking all that massive uh blowback from uh the hks and the m16s that was uh that was an insane movie guerra <laughs> best time ever <laughs> it was a great time it was Okay, so you're on that one. Great. So I'm going to come in with this. And now, uh, Dave, can you see that circle? Oh, now I'm blocking it. You're doing a real great job of being a door and not a window. Right. Sorry. How's that? That's good. Okay. Door, not a window. Okay, good. So what I'm trying to show our person on the, uh, the V-Raptor is that beautiful reflection in her eyes is round and it's more organic. So now give me a square over there. I know I have a square bounce behind there, that rectangle. Thank you, John. Yeah. So now I'll use a rectangle bounce and now you'll start to see the square corners in her eye. So uh, basically, I just like it because it rounds out the eye, it looks more natural, and it doesn't have all these weird right angles that don't look so good. Okay. All right. Any other questions there? No, we can keep going. Okay. All right. So now we're going to go to our 50 mil, which is going to be our wider perspective, so we can see much more of our background and uh, all the, the interesting uh, kind of uh, light quality we have back there. It's almost like you want something over there. I did want something over there, but initially it wasn't, even, it wasn't trimmed up, so. Uh, pan right uh, with the. Uh, because we weren't, you know, we were over there before. We didn't get that far over. Yeah. So let's slide these cameras over a little bit more. Okay. And then ladies, just rotate, yeah, square up just a little bit to that. So we can get a little more uh, in the background. 
Uh, go to your right a little bit, uh, Soyana. Yeah, no, I think that's all right. Hmm. Let's get another practical line. You steal that price, don't put it over there. Right. You can do that. Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Scoop you over a little further. All right, let's do that. Do that because there's an outlet right there. You can put it right oh, there. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Thank a little you, lighting adjustment. Great time to thank our sponsors. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> go ahead and keep those questions coming, guys. I'm watching the chats. So if you've got different things that pop up, feel free to drop them in. I'll try to do my best to get them all in. And obviously, we want to keep things moving, but we want to do our best to try to get those questions answered. Okay. All right. Now you've coming around so much, you don't have that practical. So. Make sure we get both practicals in that uh, in the background, and bring the warm one in the corner. Bring that one up, uh, the other one in intensity, John. Okay. Yeah. How's that? A little more. Oh, oh come back down. Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right, we see it on one camera, but not on the other. That's fine. Okay. All right. So uh, let's get ready to slate this for our top light look. And then we'll slide over to our pipe light. Or do we have to change batteries? Yeah. Okay. No problem. Hey Shane, real quick, what's the difference between a CDL and a LUT? A CDL is a, um, it's basically a color decision list. So that's what, that's what lays on top of your LUT, your show LUT or your base LUT or whatever you want to call it. So a CDL is just a color correction that doesn't have secondaries. It's just lift, gamma, and gain, uh, and obviously color. So um, those, it's very in the, the realm of what color timers had when they were doing film. So it's not secondary control. It's not crank and saturation. It's none of those kind of things. It's just lift, gamma, and gain, and, and color and saturation. So would you then take, like when you're going to use what you're building now, you're building CDLs. Are you going to take the red film bias LUT and use that as your base, like the camera's gonna be set to that, then you're gonna put this on top of it? Correct. From there? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so the film bias red LUT that I kind of worked with red to, to build, uh, that is what we're using now as our base, okay? And um, so that's our base LUT, and then the CDL is going to add on top of that to swing it blue or warm or whatever those adjustments are. So your base let just gives you a beautiful, even playing field. If you're outside and you set it at 5,600, it's gonna look neutral, it's gonna look white. Uh, and then if I want it colder, then I would throw my CDL on it that would be a colder tonality. Okay. All right. Are we uh, in a good yes. place? Okay, good. All right, let me get uh, Kurt back with the motor that pops off more than any time I've ever seen any motor top pop off. It's the motor of death. It's a bad rod more than anything. You can keep going, Shane. We can work around it. Okay, we'll work yeah. around it. All right, here we go. All right, going with the XL. And got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and let me have my circle bounce. Uh, look up. Don't bring it in yet. Uh, then look left. And look right. And look forward. And bring the circle bounce in. 
Kurt, can you guys step to your right so we can see that practical? Thank you. There you go. Okay. Nice. All right, cut. Okay, take the bounce away. Next camera. Okay. All right, looking up. Looking left. Looking right. Look back to camera. Circle bounce in. Okay, great. Okay, and cut. All right, that uh, is our cream source. Now we're going to move on to our pipe light. So let's go ahead and kill this and bring our pipe light up. And ladies, you're going to slide right, o right over here. Uh, go on the back. Hit the switch. There you go. And there you go. Okay. Now you ladies are going to stand right about here. Oh. Okay, come in a little more. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can come up a little bit. All right, let's try that. All right, let's move cameras over here. Where do you want to be? See that practical in the background too? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Thank you so much. All right, sliding over. Guys, this is, this is pretty much ridiculous. I mean, we have to change this. Right, because it's... Tubes. I'll take care of that. Thank you. Shane, go ahead and keep tweaking and do what you're doing. I uh, I need to check something technically on my side here for our stream, so don't get going just yet. Something's happening on the stream. Not sure. I think I might have just something went down on my end. Okay, let's bring the <coughs> bring the pipe light up a little bit. And Shane, you're seeing the film bias light. Right? Film bias? Yeah. DR come up a little. What, what's the level, DR? The 35. Come up to 40. There's 40. turn on the room, the live stream room, and turn those can lights back on. I wonder what those All right, Shane, we're good. You can uh, take it away. Like, what does this look 
like uh, Guerra? Uh, uh, that's a compl that's a whole different uh, location. <laughs> that's a whole different location. It looks like the office. Now we're shooting the office. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> wow, those things are like cannons. Right? Yeah, at, at our levels, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The apocalypse. Okay. Hey, Bradley, in this instance, you you use a CDL after the LUT. So the LUT's going to go in first, then you use <clears throat> the CDL on top of the LUT. What about that? That's, in, that's kind of interesting. Actually. Yeah, that's kind of nice. Yeah. Yeah. Who said that one tube up top? Yeah. Is that what that is? Yeah, that's nice. What would that tube look like if we wrote? Is it? You could rotate I was it wrong. this way. Sorry. Yeah, Give me better wall, information. Right? The yeah. CDL always comes first before the light. Yeah, it's all adjusted. We're getting oh, our terminology backwards. Come on, Guerra. What do you think? Well, I wasn't here that day, sir. <laughs> Marshall's, Marshall's yelling at me. Yeah. Marshall's changed the IT. He just he smacked me in the head for giving you guys bad information. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. Any daily's house is going to do it yeah. before by default. There we go. Did Thanks, Marshall. A, yeah, a little piece of tape. Little uh, maybe bring it back a little bit. There's a little bit. What did you change the? the so we're back to the film bias. You want to go back to the uh, the, the uh, medium soft? Yeah. Okay. So going back to the medium soft for it. Uh, um, if you wanted it back a little bit, I'm not going to tape tape it off. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. And close okay. The Very good. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, what's? Let me see what the color temperature is on our pipe light. Thirty-three hundred. That's why it's a little warm. No, I understand. Uh, but I'm kind of liking that. Being a little warm. Looks like some mud on the floor. Do you have that? Yeah. Do you want the circuit box on the floor? Yeah, or we got muzz. We have scrap muzz. I just yeah. Put a big. Yeah, I got scrap muzz. Oh, good. You got bleached? Yeah. Oh. Muzz R Us. The biggest piece ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hmm. Things are so stingy. Yeah, I mean, that helps a little bit. And then, the, yeah, that's filling in nice on Kira and soy. Yeah. We call this pipe light? Yeah. Pipe light copy. All right, let me, uh, so you have a mark there on the pipe light. It's color temp, right? Yeah, it's a 3200. Okay, now let's set a different one. What's our camera set at, 4000? Yes, sir. Okay, so let's go to 4000. Uh, come up to 4100. Perfect. Okay, so that's 4,000 Kelvin. So that's going to be more neutral. Hmm. I like the warmth. Separates it out more. Okay, go back to 3,200. Yeah. Uh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Somewhere in between. Is that 32? Is, Is that, that 32 there? Yeah, 
That only goes to 32, I think, right? No, it goes to 20. It goes to 28, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go to 35. No? 34. 34. 33. 33. 34. 33. <laughs> no, 34 is good. <laughs> okay, great. All right, so uh, perfect. That's 34, right? You said? Yeah, 34. Okay, great. All right, so we're 3,400 on the pipe light. And uh, yeah, let's go for this. So we got our 50 mils on. Okay. All right, let's roll. So the reason we're doing this is we're trying two different type lights, uh, pipe, uh, two different top lights. One was just a four by four. This one is what pipe light calls their queen, which is six feet long by three feet wide. It's an inflatable light that uh, you blow up with just, uh, you know, a kind of a pump that blows up air mattresses. And it has a couple different options. You can go with the white honeycomb that you see right here, this egg crate, uh, which can, that keeps the light more directed, but also keeps it going into their eyes. If that was uh, black, I would lose that beautiful light in their eyes that you see that's happening just uh, from the shadow of their eyelashes. So this enables to, you to control the light, but then also keep that beautiful kind of light in their eyes. Uh, and I love the, the length of this because obviously it's two feet longer, so it's going to wrap into their eyes and not be so extreme uh, with the uh, shadows and the kind of the skull eye factor. Okay. All right. Let's roll. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And look up, ladies. And look to your left and to your right and back the camera. Okay, cut. Now we go with the wrap V Raptor. And good. Got it. And look up, ladies. And look to your left and to your right. And back the camera. All right, roll both, uh, roll the XL at the same time. Let me have my circle bounce. Amen. Go ahead and bring that in. See how that looks. We're rolling on both cameras. Bring the circle bounce into the frame so I know it's in, in uh, coming in there. Great. Okay, now drop it down. Nice. Uh, take it away a little bit. It's too much. Yeah, there you go. That's nice. Keep the cheek lines. Yeah. Between them and the other. All right, look up, ladies. And look to your left. And to your right. And back to camera. Okay, and cut those camera. Now, go ahead and give me the film bias back. Yeah, coming up a little. So this was just the kind of the bare, you know, red LUT. Uh, and now when we go film bias, Let's see what happens. So that's up on both of them. That's film bias yeah. now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's add that in. Uh, this looks more real. It's not so poppy with all the. <clears throat> not so sunny sky. Yeah. You want me to go back on the previous? Um, yeah, and put the film bias. Pipe light and those. go back on. Copy that. We don't have to go back and reshoot that. You can just. No, no, I can just put that. In. I can reapply. Okay, it. great. All right, that's excellent. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move out of the top light scenario and we're going to go into some urban light. So we're going to fire up some sodium vapors and metal halides, so we can kind of get a really nice gold tone uh, for sodium vapor lights. So like on the street lights, and then we'll go into a nice cyan tone for metal halide. Okay. So let's kill this. Let's bring over the sodium vapor, please. Uh, let me just get out of your way. Actually, you know what? Leave it on for a minute. Yeah. 
for a second, I just need the park light. So. Which one of these? these uh, the left one, sodium vapor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's try to move the cameras out of there so we can move those lights around. Do we do that? Oh, no. Okay. I'm just Another changing a uh, mag uh, real quick. Yeah, so. we'll put it on the mark here, and I think we should put it so it's like. Yeah, the back behind him, street light. Yeah, la, la, street la, la, la. light. And then uh, who else can help me here? You've been helping a lot. Okay, great. Go grab the Aperture Nova, wherever that is. Uh, let's get the Aperture Nova. We're going to use that as a. And let's put a stinger on that so we can move it around wherever we want and it doesn't come unplugged. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, and I think let's plug us in right over here. So. Uh, yeah, you can plug it right over there. Make sure you don't have any knots in it. Oh, yeah. You want to go back there? We can go back there. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Uh, we're looking this way. Okay. All right. No, I'll be okay. It's like... Uh, 70 watts. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. While that's coming up, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a mix of old school technology of a sodium vapor and the new school technology of taking the sodium vapor once it's fully up. We will use XY coordinates within our Aperture Nova uh, 300 to match that color exactly okay so that's the kind of things that you want to be doing on set uh, you're going to be when you you use the beauty of led technology to leverage it to match these lights that no gel would ever match don't you agree john yes yeah no gel that's ever been manufactured whether it's urban vapor or any of these things never look like a sodium vapor that's on the street or a metal halide. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the true fixture that's on the, the uh, street, and we are going to then max it, match the XY coordinates on this to be able to wrap it around and make it nice and soft. So why don't you bring this uh, bounce and move this right here for me, okay? You probably had more room to go the other direction. Hold on, before you do that, let's bring it from the other side. Yeah. Yeah. So just move it over here. So it's more of a backlight that way. Great. Okay. And that's nice. Okay. And then, Rio, you're going to come in here with this. And the aperture's coming over here. I will say, if you have to use gel, if you have to, the best is, the only one to use is the 651, Lee 651 high sodium. High it sodium is the high is is the closest you're going to get to sodium sodium vapor in my experience. So okay, for what it's worth. All right, so I already took this color temp reading, and I already did the X Y. So um, on a high pressure sodium. So I'm going to show you, Kurt. So this is the uh, X Y coordinates to this specific light. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the XY function of the aperture. And how you do that with this color meter is you go into its text function. Okay. So you go out of this, you go into text. Plug this in on the other side. Come on, baby. There we go. Uh, so now I have my text and I have my X and Y. So I am going to match this XY value right here. So 
Uh, John, why don't you uh, start powering this thing up? Yeah, it should be powered and up. Are we powered up? No, nope, it's not plugged in. There it is. Okay. All right. Now you're going to go into your XY. I'm going to go into my XY, which is I'm in XY. Yeah. So what you do is you move it along here. You know, along the X axis. Uh, you. You have the number. Hold on. <laughs> there. That you push it like this. Yeah. And then you change it. Okay. So you're going to go to five. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then click it, mm -hmm. and then go to the seven. Five. No, no, go to seven over there. Eight. Yeah, keep on clicking. Keep on clicking. Come on, seven. Five, no, go seven. to three. Five, three, I want. Oh. Five, okay. three. Five, three. Okay, great. And then five, nine. Five, three, five, nine? Yep. Is that the number? Yep. Nine. Nine. Oops. That's strange that it does it like that, but okay. All Great. Right. Okay, now click it. That's what it says. Oh, yeah, there you go. Now you're on, should be on Y now. Okay, yeah. and now you're going to go 4180. Four. One. Oops. Eight zero. Eight zero. Wow, that's looking damn good. Thanks. Okay. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, now we want to. We're just going to bounce direction. that. Do we want to come? Uh, yeah, we'll this? bring the girls right in here. Okay, Kira and Soyana, let's come on in. Yeah. Uh, Okay, and you're going to be standing uh, let's see. Back up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, right, right in there. Right in yeah. And uh, I think you need to back up with that cuz we're going to be in Are you are they in the frame? I can kind of keep it out from there. Yeah, let's back it up. Go around the pipe light a little bit. Okay. Sodium vapor is stealing, isn't it? No. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I will need a flag for that. Well, we could just come straight across, like this. We could come straight across. Well, no, I, I wanted to wrap that much. I think okay. that's good. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I will come over. Now, do you want to shape this uh, practical off the background at all? Yes. Kind of keep it on I'd like, uh, let's get some black wrap and just black wrap the back of that. Copy that. Uh, that should be in here. Yeah. There you go. You can run that in. Run that into. <laughs> yeah. I really want this. Uh, Shane. Yeah. If you really want this, if I can come this way. Sure. A little bit. Then I can get, you know what's nice is when you get the flare from this, it's, it sells it. Yeah. Completely. But, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I have to say, like, that XY looks damn good. Yeah. Yeah. And this is, this is a technology that never really existed about four or five years ago, uh, where we can get in the, the mode of the XY and really dial it in, and you can literally match a source, no matter what source. You can match a, like a, a red bulb, you know, in a lamp, whatever that XY is, and set it, and, and it'll come up. So this is a, a cool way to, to understand how to match your sources on location. I get a quick question for you, Shane. Color meter yeah. to do it. Um, I want to get this one here. It says, uh, how do you feel about the Cineon conversion and resolve to use the film emulation LUTs if you want to create the classic like Kodak 2383 look, or are you just doing everything from scratch? Yeah, I tend to do a lot of that from scratch. I mean, 
those um, like I specifically for the Gemini, I designed a 5298 uh, film uh, em emulation. Uh, so it had all the 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 um, the the properties of, of shooting 5298. But what I end up seeing is a lot of different artifacting and that stuff. So I really wanted to just build it from scratch. And that's what you have right now on the red site is that film bias slut. Uh, that was a lot of uh, us working together to kind of come up with that uh, look and feel. And it doesn't uh, get artifacty and kind of fall apart when you start to really push it. Okay. All right. So let's see where we are back here. We've totally boxed. Kurt out of everything back here now. Did you buy that vapor light? Is that a Home Depot? Dust Home to, Depot Dust, dust to Dawn. Dawn, right? Yeah, yeah. Dust to Dawn. Yeah. yeah. They're the best. Yeah. All right. So I usually, when I'm doing, um, are you, where are you? Uh, okay, you're, so usually when I'm doing um, these color temps, night exterior, sodium vapor, I like to go 36 to 3700 Kelvin. Right now, the camera's set at 4,000, and if Dave shows it to you, it's a little too orange. So let's slide the camera to 3,700, uh, Marshall, Copy. so we can kind of take that edge off. And we do have the film bias LUT on right now as our base LUT, correct? That is correct. Okay, awesome. Okay, so now uh, looking at that, this is 36? 37. 37. Um, can we turn that back off? Yes. Oh, no. uh, although it's giving us this. Oh, which, that's which nice. Is, which yeah. is nice. So yeah. that's kind of Maybe a nice thing. Maybe angle it so it goes off of that more. Yeah, we can tape it or yeah. angle it. Yeah. Let's do Let's that. Let's do that. Okay. Ladder, please. Okay. Um, tilt up so people can see our, our sodium vapor fixture there, Kurt. Just so, oh, we, we took it out, didn't we? No, it's all good. Uh, so, Kurt, uh, you got this, right? You're showing them that. So, over here, guys, this is a high pressure sodium. Uh, this is a dust to dawn fixture. You can buy these things at Home Depot. And then I just put a cartellini on the back side of it and energize it with a extension cord. And this is, you know, kind of emulating that uh, urban night street light vibe of high pressure sodium. So what I would say is what John's doing is he's taking that cyan kind of off of the background so it trails off a little more. I have the same color temp of the high pressure sodium bouncing in to this fill. But what I want to do is I always try to push some cyan into the shadows. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add one more bounce over camera and we're going to bring the Q500 in and we're going to push some cyan into it. Okay. So um, you got a circle, do you have a four by four there? and then I have foam core. Yeah, do the circle bounce with a platypus. Okay, great. And then I'll, uh, John, to get that Q500 over here and yeah, put it right above camera here. You got it. Why don't you hold on to this? Or you have a stand? I think you got a stand buried back there. Yeah, I guess so. The reason I like adding that, swap it out to a 40. It, if you go to a sodium vapor uh, street and there's not any other color, it just becomes a wash. So what I'm always doing when I'm going into these scenarios where I have a lot of sodium vapors, I try to fill with more of a green tonality, uh, like a blue-green tonality. So I have a little color contrast. It doesn't have to be super heavy. It just needs to separate out. Just like what you're seeing on Kira's hair right now, that cyan from that tube is looking awesome. But now what we want to do is fill in all these shadows on this side to be able to be a little more cyan. So we get color contrast, so it doesn't feel like just a wash. Any questions, David? Ooh, questions. Mm, let me scroll yeah. back. Let me take a look real quick. I was answering a couple people. We answered all that. Let me look over here real quick. So this is an RGB. I think, uh, so I would go, there. what I would do is just spin the green end. Oh, and I kind of formulated a question out of some pieces of the rest. Up to now, you've got a close relationship with David Cole, obviously, colorist yeah. over at Photochem. You guys, long history together. 
if you were to work with somebody new as a colorist, are you going to bring a color scientist in the mix into that process when you're building, you know, CDLs and LUTs? Or are you just going to work directly with the colors? Well, a lot of, uh, a lot of post-production facilities don't have a col uh, color scientist on, uh, on staff, if you can believe it or not. Um, and one of the, the, the wonderful things about Photochem is they do have a color scientist, Joseph, that I am in constant contact with. Now, how do I use Joseph? Well, how I use Joseph is when I shoot GoPros, Insta360, uh, GH5s, uh, when I'm doing all these different multi-format, smaller cameras, I use Joseph to go in there and mat, uh, design a lookup table that turns a GoPro into something that looks more like a Red Raptor or takes a Canon 1DC that I'm going to hit uh, land a car on flipping over and land on its crash camera, uh, they're going to take that and make that look more like a Red Raptor. So that's where I love to use the color scientists. On uh, you know safety, I sent him black magic footage because we we're going to do a lot of helmet cam with the 6K black magic. So he was able to come up with a lookup table that uh, changed the color science of that camera. Uh, and made it look more like my red Geminis. Okay, nice. So let me. Uh, so what we have right now is we have our sodium vapor as like a three-quarter backlight. We have our aperture 300. We've now matched the XY perfectly to match these color tones, and then we've added a Q500 at 6500 Kelvin with a uh, full green on it. So we've mixed green into it to kind of give us some uh, color contrast. So you're, uh, you're using full green gel on top of that Felix Q500, right? No, I, I swung it uh, with uh, the oh. hue control. Yeah. Gotcha, copy that. So full LED all the way. Okay, now let's flash that light. So let's have one of our, uh, if you could go over there and I want you to basically turn that light on and off so we can take a look at it, what it's doing. Okay? Yeah, that works. Yeah. Up top. There's a switch. There's a, see the red light and the green light? Yeah, there you go. Okay, girls, look ahead. Okay, and turn it off. See how if we didn't have any other color in the background, this would look like a complete washout. Okay, if we didn't have the cyan tubes and the warmth in the background, this would feel like a wash. Why don't we show them that, John? I'll kill all this, and you kill those tubes in the background. Okay? Oh, I think I can kill it from here. Uh, I can, no, you gotta, oh yeah, I can kill those. Uh, conference room, boom. Uh oh. No, nope. the trigger's not working. Okay, and now I'm going to. We took the practicals out of my queue. We we basically destroyed my. <laughs> okay. All right, you turn those off. Now I'm just going to pull the plug on the rest of this. Okay. All right. So, just by looking at this image, it becomes a wash. All the different tonalities are absolutely the same. The bounce and this and the background would be, you know, very washy. So, let's go ahead and turn this light on. Okay, so now that helps 
with the wash. It helps to show that color contrast. Then, just like any street in an urban night scene, you're gonna have cool white fluorescence in the background. You're gonna have neon, you're gonna have all that. Then John starts turning that on. I start turning this on. Uh, it's on the bottom. No, bottom, 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 bottom. No, no, underneath, underneath. Click that thing. <laughs> Good, no, awesome. I know. <laughs> I know, I was looking for it myself. Um, okay. Now, why didn't those tubes come up? Andrew, just so you know, Shane's got plenty of people to help him. He just doesn't, he doesn't want to ask for help. No, <laughs> we've got... All of our special lights in the background are all on remote triggers because we're screwing with everything. It makes it difficult because, you know, Shane and, and the rest of the team here in the you know office have kind of designed it. But we've got John and, and other guys here helping out. So okay. This is all new to them. All right. Great. So now with all that, we are able to create color contrast, which you would do on, uh, you know, a night scene. So right now we've added a little more of this green to kind of make this so it's not so washy and uh you know if there was anything i'd want to do um well just uh let me see a little more uh warmth a little more gold tone overall okay sure you only do it this way Okay. You want to do it in the midtones instead, or do you like the highlights better? No. I'm trying to keep this more blue, but here maybe we do it this way. Maybe I'll just do it that way. That's a, that's really as nice as it doesn't. Because it's almost like it goes too far. Yeah. So let me compensate. Uh, you're spinning around in circles. All right. Yeah, here, let's uh, do it. Go back to where we were. There we okay. Go. And now just. Um, Do we like the highlights? Because we're still trying to keep this center on, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, let me do, uh, go to 4,000 Calvin on the camera for a second. Yeah. yeah. You're missing that backlight up high. 4, Which backlight? The one I'm on the ceiling. Yeah, it's not on. Oh, shoot. Thank you so much. I got to hit my conference in my live stream room. There we go. Oh. <laughs> oh. Straight here, but probably. Actually, Let's see. Go back to 37. Yeah, I've got about 37. Yeah. I know. This time we're going to go back, pushing a little bit more warm. Oh. Too much? Yeah. I think go back where you were. Just Actually, otherwise, more. it gets, it's nicer when it's that. Otherwise, yeah. it gets cruddy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's changing cruddy it looking. Yeah. That's just yeah. Looks sloppy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's looking good. Okay. All right. Let's roll on this. So this is our sodium vapor look. All right. Got our slate. Thank you so much. Okay. And ladies, look to your left. Look at that light up there. What the hell is that street light? Okay, and I'll look to your right. Mm -hmm. And then back to camera. Again, just a reminder for everybody watching, the okay, A camera is I the Lights Primes on yeah, the Raptor a XL. A camera is Lights Prime, and uh, the mm -hmm. Red Raptor is the Ingenue Optimo Primes. Yeah, and the v, we're going to switch over to the V Raptor right now, and you're seeing the uh, Ingenue Optimos. Okay, look left. And look right, and back to camera. Excellent, okay. All right, sweet, let's cut that. Now let's go metal halide. All righty. Okay, so we're gonna kill this one. Yep. Ooh, look really at you, good. I love that you tied it, or somebody did. Yeah, me. <laughs> yeah, oh, this is a great, great story. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're not sure if you want to share it? Can't wait. <laughs> you so, do it, do it, do it. No, it's good. 
So uh, when I was doing a lot of this work before, you know, we started having LEDs that we could do X, Y coordinates and match sodium vapor, metal halide and all that stuff, we would do these lights. We would, uh, I literally had lightning strikes build 400 watt, 1000 watt high pressure sodiums and all this stuff. Now the problem is if these things are unplugged, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes for them to cool down to actually strike again. So we were on this set where we had so many of them deep and we had electricians that didn't understand that you have to, what did I say? Put a 200 feet of extension cord on that so you can move it anywhere. Yeah. And the, the person was moving it and he was like, you know, we were just about ready to shoot. And I go, just a little more to the right, just a little more to the right. And then all of a sudden the cord pulls out and the light goes off and we're like, you know, <laughs> and a little more dramatic than that, from what I remember. <laughs> so, you know, when you're working with these high pressure sodiums and metal halides, they need to be tied. You need to put enough uh, extension cords around them. So once they come up to color temp, you can move them around and, and adjust. OK, we'll bring that over. Stinger running through the middle of the set. It's yeah, perfect. Even nicer. Please. Great. Thank you very much. I'll take that in. Okay, so now uh, what we're going to do is we're going to dial the uh, XY on the metal halide. So who can come over here? Do you want to hop can on this me? light? Before you do that, Shane, can you give yeah. me 30 seconds? Oh, I got to answer a question. I'm doing a yeah. little power. Well, I'm doing a little power adjustment on the um, on the movie real quick. Uh, let me look at see if we got any questions in the hopper. Let's do a little question. Oh yeah, let's answer. do some questions. Yeah. So, uh, Belinsky asks, how do you try to sit down such saturated colors in the show light, but at the same time they can be important to the camera? Not sure what he means by sit down, but I guess maybe just kind of adjust and have control over. Um, well, he asked earlier. He says, "What about, for example, hues that can provide going beyond the gamut? So, you know, something that's very saturated." So, hmm, I'm trying to think of how he's putting this. Uh, thinking like, how do you control? I guess like in some ways, like how do you control the bleed of certain colors and saturation within your LUTs? You know, like cause certain fixtures. Yeah. Not every LED and every gel, you know, gels are different. Really, how do you control that with your LUTs? Yeah, that, that's a really good one. So when I was on holiday, um, we were brought into a nightclub where I had uh, a lot of moving fixtures. We had a time parameter where we did not have enough time to bring in uh, movie, uh, moving lights that are movie, uh, you know, very cinema based which have all the different good CRI color spectrums. So we had a lot of uh, lights that were not that. They were, uh, didn't have a really good CRI value. So the, the colors that they made were super magenta, almost when it would sweep, when the lights would sweep across, they would literally go white across uh, Emma Roberts or Luke Breezy. It was crazy. Uh, and then I would dim them down, dim them down as much as I can. But for some reason, the camera could not see that spectrum. And I was like, what is going on? And then I just brought in Astera and fired up with magenta and it saw it perfectly. So I'm like, all right, it's not the, the camera. It has to be the light. And sure enough, it was. So you got to watch yourself with, with cheaper moving lights. They just don't have... Uh, that uh, right quality. So that's something that happened on holiday. And trust me, Dave Cole was pulling his hair out trying to write a uh, software because the guy's a computer scientist as well. So he was literally writing code to be able to, to tone down that magenta so it didn't go super white and explode every time it started sweeping across people. But yeah, there's specific tonalities like we saw just in our test, and you were all a witness to it, we were on the film bias LUT, and it was hard to get that cyan, right? Well, the film bias is 
pushing more red yellow. Uh, so it's, it's, we just had to do a little color temperature shift and then all of a sudden the cyan uh, came into the tone, into the right color tone. So it's, it's crazy because sometimes I, I did, I'll never forget the time I did safety and I wanted on safety, I wanted uh, these uh, Asteras out ringing the diner to be gold. Well, I could not get them gold. Whatever I did, I put 179, I put gold color, I put all these different things. Finally, I just went with gold gel. And for some reason, the 179 doubled up, was able to give me the gold color uh, that I wanted. So it reacts differently to every sensor. And there's some uh, specific colors that you just can't get sometimes. And uh, you know, you gotta kind of try to do workarounds on set while it's all happening. Cause I'm looking into my eye and it looks gold. And I look at the camera and it looks orange. And what you see is what you get. So you got to be as close as possible with that. Very cool. Yeah, let's get back into it. All right. So now we've uh, fired up our metal halide. And then what's your name? Jake. Jake, Jake is going to help us with the XY function. <laughs> okay. So you're going to click on that one. Okay. And you're going to give me 3876. You got to go to your five. Yep. There, three. I and didn't get that. Yeah, I'm done with you, Siri. Uh, seven, six. I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> Great. And now hit your Y. Okay. And now that one's going to be four, zero, one, two. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right, San Clemente Island. Okay. So that's damn good uh, match, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, ladies, let's kind of get into your mark there, please, Soyana and Kira. Oh, uh, David, there's some questions on YouTube. Do you want to answer a couple of those? Yeah, no, I see them. We, let's keep going forward. Okay, no problem. Uh, was that your mark before, or were you there? You're right there? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, let me go back in here. Okay, so this is where I want to get that nice, uh, deeper, colder cyan vibe on this. Yeah. So uh, instead of us, well, we could swing the color temp, but then everything else is going to change. Um, but let's, let's go there for a second. Let's go 2,900 Kelvin on the cameras. Copy that, 2,900. And answer a couple of questions. The, the lights that are the practicals in the background, the little, you can see in the frame, all the little sparkly things in the cubes, those are Aperture MCs. And then we've got Colt LEDs laying, the LED four foot tubes laying down. And then those are just regular um, bulbs from Ikea. What are, what are the, in the paper lanterns back there? Are those just Ikea bulbs? Uh, no, those are actually uh, 25 watt uh, candle opera bulbs. Okay. So go to uh, 3,400. The metal halide, the color temperature of that light is 3,988. That's it? So 4,000. Yeah. Okay. So now let's, let's try to push more of the, the, the cyan into it in our CDL. Yeah, for sure. So yeah. let's start swinging that. the fill light off? Fill bounce. Yeah, kill the fill for a second. I forgot my glasses. We'll do that next. Thank you. Sorry? Okay. We'll do that next. I can't read it. No, 3400 in there. Okay, so that's more of a cyan color. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to go off and move on. If that's too much, we can do it in the shadows rather no, than the new right. ones. Okay. And now uh, let's go, let's warm that up and go 2,800 Calvin on, on our warmth here. I think I spun this all the way down on the Kelvin. Is this going to get done? Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can get it there. Yeah, it's, this is 2,800 and it's, I kept the grain in it, so. Yeah, it's still, it's not enough, I don't think, to, for warmth. It's not enough co color contrast. Though. Right, yeah. So, um, we can add some gel to it. Yeah. We're going to do like a half O, half 
Half draw, half O. Or do you want to do, yeah, let's go half O. Or, or you put an RGB light there and we dial a color. If we have a color dial. I don't uh, know let's see, so. what do I have that I can do that with? Do you have a sky panel? We have no, a, I don't have library. that. Uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll gel it. We'll gel it. Come on, man. I mean, I do have a Cineo. While we wait, but we can take this time to thank our sponsors. You want to do this just one? Kidding. I got a Cineo 410. Again, keep those questions coming. Big. And uh, we'll see them in the chat. Yeah, I'll throw them yeah. in there when we get the chance. You want to just gel it? Uh, sure. Okay. Keep the quarter big enough to double. That might be nice, right? Yeah. Here's my CTS. Four, half, eight. You got quarter? That's half. I'm looking. Quarter. There you go. Try to do those then. Okay. Who's got the scissors? <laughs> <laughs> I love all my FA members came prepared. I love that shit. Exactly. So I didn't have to. Yeah. Even uh, okay, David, any other questions? And who's got the tape? Because I don't have any. Hang on, look. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, I got clothespins right here for you. Uh oh. No questions just yet. We can keep going. Okay. You're all off kilter there. You're there you go. That's great. All right. You got more? Cut it to here and we'll have more than enough. Break it in the gun? Yeah. You need your best to avoid my thumb. Keep going. There you go. Look at that yeah. precision. The perfect slice. Ah, uh, that jinxed it. <laughs> go for it. Do it. Just cut it. Don't worry, they'll make more. All right, great. If you're, if you're wrong. Okay. All right. All right, guys. Here's your clothespins. Thanks. I'll just hold it up and you can tell me what you think. Okay, great. All right. All right, uh, Kira, let me see in there. That's Thank uh, you. one layer. Okay, two. And that's two layers. Okay, now turn it up like 17,000%. Coffee going to 17,000%. Is it this one? Uh-huh. 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 Uh-hu
So I had 3200 ISO. So I'm going to add a lot of grain to that, make it more raw, you know? So it's like prim and proper, street girl, raw. And then uh, our character, who's our main character of the movie, was in the middle. He was at 1600. So when I do the color correction on this movie, I'm literally going to be taking, you know, uh, the, the main character and this other love interest, and I'm going to be adding that grain so you feel uh, something. You feel that weight of the grain. So I'd love to do that in post. Uh, but I assist it in camera. So I'm, I'm already shooting at these higher ISOs to add that noise. So when we do throw the grain in, it doesn't look so, uh, you know, pasted on. Uh, in regards to filters, I like to shoot as much in camera as possible. But there is an amazing course uh, with Dave Cole where we go into terms and techniques and one of the terms and techniques is black and white promist. So what you do is you go in and the post process and you're able to pull a luminance key on the blacks. And then you can also pull a luminance key on the highlights. And if it's a white promist, then your luminance key is on the, um, on the highlights. If it is a black promance, Promist, then, or no, it's exact opposite. What am I saying? If it's a, if it's a white promist, then you're pulling a luminance key on the blacks. So you're able to bring those blacks up uh, and, and uh, kind of give that blooming kind of quality. With the black promist, you're doing the exact opposite. Uh, you're working the highlights and then blooming those. So these are things that you can do in post. It's pretty easy to pull these luminance keys and you want to be very subtle with it. Uh, so you, you know, dial in your, you know, honing it in. So it's not just doing all the image. You bring in your uh, keys. So they're very specific to just the highlight sources or uh, the deeper blacks. But that's something that I used in Love Hard specifically. Uh, when he went to, when she went to Lake Placid in the movie, I did the whole thing with Black Promist, which was doing what I kind of just described. So I try to do as much as I can in camera, but then I do assist it in the DI process. Very cool. Okay. So, um, oh, here, here's another thing uh, that happens so many times. So I was on a movie just recently in New Orleans. And I was like, okay, I love building these firelight effects. I call them the trash can light. And the guys are like, what the heck is a trash can light? Well, you know what I did? All I did is I pulled out my phone and I went to the FA app and I fired up the FA app. And then I was able to uh, browse and I was able to, uh, you know, go into this, the app and specifically pull out the, um, you know, the, the uh, fire trash can light. So I basically just uh, punched that in, in my filtering process, came up with the fire light, and then handed it to my gaffer. And he programmed the magic gadget exactly how I had done in the video. And he had built the light specifically to how I had built it in the video. And I was able to uh, use this app to help uh, my process of, uh, you know, creating on set. And this was what's so powerful. Remember, this is something that you can use on set. You don't have to have your computer. Uh, you're enabled to be able to go through this and find whatever you need uh, and be able to do it on set. All right. So... Uh, we got our warm light here. We got our metal halide vibe. And uh, let's go back here and see how this is looking, Marshall. So um, let's uh, give me a little more uh, blue green yeah. overall. Coming in. Ooh, let's get more green. Okay. Yeah, we'll that's nice. Right there. Okay, good. Yep. And now let's. Uh, push the contrast just a little bit more. Yeah, for sure. So I'm going to come up five points. 
on off. You want me to come a bit more on the highlights? Yeah, okay. as you push the blacks down. You yeah, for those of you yeah. watching on the desktop, pretty sure that you can watch all this even with your account. You and some of you sign up there. just for this event. You can watch it on the app on your iPad, Android phone, all the things. We basically yeah, have everything but Apple TV because it takes forever to get approved by Apple. So we went for iOS first. So we're working on it. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, use the app. Bring a little more up in the Check mids. Check them out. Let us know what yeah. you think. Coming up on the mids. Okay. Up there. Okay, so off and then on. Great. And then okay. bring the blacks down just a little bit. Yeah, come down. Ah, oh, nice. Right there. Oh, oh. oh too much. Right. 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 Okay. So yeah. Shane, as you're doing this right now, so I'm showing them off. the. Are you adjusting on both cameras, or are you just kind of working on the? We're lights working on lenses? a camera right now. A camera. Cool. Yeah. So if you yep. can kind of look showing, at that, so bounce sure. where we were, uh, Marshall. So go to where we were in color. Yeah. So here is off. Yeah. So that that's just our film bias LUT that you're seeing right now. And then and then this is where I'm pushing it into the more of the cyan tones and cooling it up overall. And now add a little blue. Yeah, so coming back a little bit more towards the blue. Uh, no, go back with the green. I like the green a little more. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, let's roll on this. Thank you very much. So we, ow! Luckily that was beadboard. <laughs> Guerra, you made me, you didn't, you weren't there as my spotter. Oh man. Yeah, I ran right into the beadboard. Oh. Aren't you wearing your protective headgear, sir? <laughs> okay, we ready? Nice. Okay. And look to your left. Get that nice light on there. And look to your right. And back to camera. Great. Excellent. Okay. Now we go to the V Raptor. And got it. Awesome. Okay. And look left. And look right. And back to camera. Excellent. Okay, good. All right. Now, let's go uh, with 100 mils, please. You got it. All right. We're going to switch the lenses. And um, let's see if we have any other questions, David. Oh, let's look. Let's look. Hmm. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, turn around to Kurt's camera, though. Kurt's camera. He's behind gotcha. you. Uh, why should you join Filmmakers Academy? Shameless plug. We're going to do it. <laughs> it's time to sell. Why should you join Filmmakers Academy? Well, because when I was starting out as a young grip truck driver, if I had the resources, 850 plus hours of content that goes through every nuance of cinematography. I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's, it's basically how I learned to be a cinematographer is how I designed uh, with uh, all of my amazing team and with Lydia, our CEO of Filmmakers Academy, we created this f wonderful space where people can feel free to come, involve themselves in, uh, be part of the conversation. Uh, no question is a dumb question, ever. Uh, I, I cut that right to the core right off the bat. I answer every comment personally. We have spotlight coaching sessions where every month you're able to, uh, like, uh, I think next month, next month is me, right, Sweeney? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so next month I'm going to be uh, spotlight coaching. So you send questions in and I pick three and I'm able to do 15 minutes uh, specifically one-on-one -on -one interaction with you. Uh, and there, the questions, uh, the one I had in November was incredible. People asked about agent. When should you get an agent? They asked about uh, lighting. They asked about night exteriors. They, because uh, all these kind of things are, are, 
you know, you send your questions ahead of time. I do a lot of research. I pull a lot of clips so I can, uh, you know, do cause and effect so you can actually see that. And then we also offer one-on-one -on -one mentoring, which I've had 30 or 40 plus mentoring calls since we started Filmmakers Academy, and they've just been incredible. Our members are so talented and so uh, into, you know, the art of cinematography, the art of filmmaking. Because the one thing that we wanted to do is expand all our disciplines. So we have producing, color correcting, directing, uh, editing. Uh, we're adding production design, camera operating. We have grip, electric. Uh, we have camera assistant. So all these are there for all of you. How is that shameless plug, uh, David? If I wasn't already a member and helping make all this stuff, I'd probably sign up. <laughs> Oh, well, hey, this is a perfect example. Look at these men came ready to rumble with gloves on and every, all their tools are, where's your, where's your tool belt? Oh my God. All right. And if you bring out a Leatherman, you're fired immediately. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Don't validate his parking. Just, uh, to, just okay. to throw it out there, we you know we appreciate all the members and everybody that's a part of this. And Absolutely. For as, as we grow and as this this platform gets bigger and bigger, that that gives us the ability to do more. You know, we yes. can give you guys more. That's you know you think about it, it starts all the way back to your blog, Shane, where people started asking for more. Yeah, they started asking there. for more questions, more, and they wanted more and more, and they wanted video content and everything. So I wanted to be able to deliver that. And it's been this beautiful balance of me being able to still shoot movies and love uh, that collaboration with directors and all the studios are doing these uh, bigger budget films. And then I'm able to slide right into education and uh, share my knowledge uh, to all of you. Yeah. Um, all right, Kira, are What's you ready to rumble? Again? Don't hate Chris Delapace. I see you. Shameless right. plug. That's funny. It's a <laughs> pun. Okay. So now you. we have our close-up camera on so we can really get into those skin tones. Uh, slide to your right just a little, Kira. There you go. Nice. Okay. Uh, let me go back on my other monitor back here. Um, okay. Uh, looks like we're getting flared from that tube up top. Up top or on the side? In the window seat. See, I'm getting flared really from good. that. Are you gonna get it? Can you? Ish. Take a look, see if that did what you needed it to. Yeah, it got it. Not gonna okay. from this? Yep. Really? Uh, the tube in the back, I got it. Wow. Yeah. Okay, all right. So, still looks like we're getting flared on the Optima. I think, I think. You mean the Leica? Or no, the Leica, yeah, the right one. Here. Is that does that make it less? Oh, there almost got it. Yeah, there you go. A little bit nasty exposure. There you go. Okay. okay, that's better. All right. Okay. You feeling that you what? feeling enough for the color contrast with the fill? Well, it needs to be more, but but it just it's Oh Kino view, don't you worry. I see you're saying that when are we going to introduce other cameras other than RED, like Alexa, Venice, all kinds of weird. That is something that we have big plans for for this year. Is the One of the goals we have in mind is to build what we're kind of demoing and calling like a library of cameras and things like that and to kind of, you know, make it a big resource. And we're also doing stuff like that with lights. Bring so it's coming. Just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Oof. Go back down. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's roll on this. Here we go. Yeah, that's the fun thing. Uh, I'm going to be working with uh, with doing a whole library of lights. So every light that's that's like the ones that are I'm always using on my truck. I'm basically going to go through in detail. So what it does, what it's, what's its pros, what its cons, how to operate it, and then where I use that specific light on my movies and commercials and stuff. 
So there's a lot of different applications. Like, I mean, this is a perfect example. We're able to uh, use this small little MC light, the aperture to be able to give us this under cabinet kind of glow, which gives us depth and dimension in the background. So these are the kind of things that we'll be demoing. We'll show you how to use them. We'll show you how to use apps on your phone and how I use them in specific situations and how I've used them in the past on many movies so I can show those examples as well. And we're also going to be doing that with cameras. So we're going to have a running camera library as well. So you and can lenses. reference. And lenses. Everything. Okay. But obviously it's going to take us a while, but we're, we're working yeah. on it. Okay. Yeah, more signups gets us this ability. <laughs> and our sponsors. Yeah, sponsors. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Thank you to Keslo. Yeah, no Big kidding. Big thanks to Keslo on this one. Keslo, Keslo and uh, being able to uh, supply all this. Okay, ladies, look to your left. And look to your right. And back to camera. Great. Now we'll go to the XL. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, absolutely nice. right, Andrew, about the, the light hitting Kira's hair and okay. Soyana's hair is about creating the edge left. separation from the background. And looking to the right and back to camera. And cut. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on to we've done metal halide, we've done our top lights, we've done our, pra our practical battens. So now we're going to go to overhead fluorescent mode. Okay, so let's blow this out. Uh, and let's turn on our overhead fluorescence, and I'll get that. Yeah, where would those be? They're all the way back here. Need, oh, okay. Need what? Carry in hand? <laughs> no, we're good. Oh, okay. All yeah, right, then. You. All right, we're going to take a little minute, guys, do a little changeover, get into our overhead fluorescent look. So think about, I feel like this is one that a lot of people ask for a lot, and we do have some content coming up of, like, how do you deal with office environments? How do you deal with... You know, you walk into a scenario and this is what it is. It's I gotta augment around it. What you I'd know. love to do is let's clear out this board. Okay. Uh, you can put all those lights over there uh, on that side if you don't mind. Thank you so much. Hey, Phoenix, just to answer your question about how do you, you know, I don't know if you're joking or not, but I think it's a real thing of, uh, you know, how do you stay away from getting injured on sets with all this equipment? And it's partially, too, it's like you know, we've got some course material yeah. coming up. I know, you know, it's not as popular, it's grown, it's bigger. You know, Lydia Hurlbut's going to be teaching about wellness and some different things to take care of yourself, take care of your body, not only while you're working, but before and after. You know, I'm turning 37 this year, and I'm feeling it. <laughs> so I've been taking a lot of her advice over the years of, you know, it's not just always about, you know, I just got to watch what I eat and then try to just do some exercise and work, but it's so much more than that. So there's a lot of those things that are, you know, she's going to be talking about. I wish I could dive into it, but she's the expert. She's the master, but she's at home right now taking, taking care of, uh, of some family, they get, you know, Shane's mom and all that kind of stuff right now. She couldn't be, be here today, uh, but you will see her on the platform very soon. All right, so let's bring the cameras right over here. Now that we've cleared that area out. You need more room still or you good? No, I think that's gonna be all right. Yeah. And somebody who's feeling we'll tough. stay on the uh, we'll start on the hundreds and then move back to the the fifties. Well no, let's go to the fifties. Let's do the transition right now. Shane, just so you know, I'm giving, before you kind of get back into it, I'm just giving Kurt a moment to just dock for a second as we're moving around. Okay. Way, so all you guys are going to be in the shot. Yeah. yeah. Come on this way. And let's take the black wrap. Let's clean it off oh. the floor. Uh, let's get the sandbag out of there. Okay. We'll left our laundry down here. And then we'll go back to 50 mils. The biggest thing, Phoenix, that has helped me that I've kind of taken from, from Shane is, and I wish I'd, he has one at home, is time in a sauna. And stretching, that has been a huge, huge improvement to my daily life. <laughs> hmm. 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 Do you want to move your sandbag up here? 
What's that? Not sure yet. Shane, this is our last setup, right? Our last yeah, look? Last setup. Yep. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, great. Just double check it. We're just taking a look at media and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. This can go into that back corner as well. We'll see other things that look like it. <laughs> for those of you who have been sticking around the whole time, thanks for staying. This will be our last kind of setup. Um, and we'll definitely we'll take some questions well, at the end and whatnot too, and and uh, yeah. So take this time, use the restroom, get something to eat. And I had the four in my hand. I was still using the four. What are we gonna do? How are you doing, Damon? Work for the company. I guess it is. How's it going? And what do you think? I like. I have like. No, it's a. F it's a. F it's caffeinated. It's a four. We're doing this commercial for the seven today. Why would I have an eight? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's just a fucking bad. That's twelve mini. Yeah, it's a smaller. I that's it. And I want the smaller. I want it in my pocket. It's got to be. It's even smaller. Before that, I had the seven. This is smaller than the seven. I'm like, the idea is to make them smaller, guys. Don't yeah, just keep making them add more crap on them and make them bigger. I don't need that. Oh, no, but you get the other lens. And this, no, I'll, I'll, if I want a camera, I'll get a camera. But All right. How you doing? How you doing, Kurt? Uh, one second, sorry. That's okay. You wanna? Do you need help from Damon? Okay. All right. Let's go. Let's lose the cyan gel off of those, oh. and then go uh, to yeah. Let's go back to daylight. Shane, we're gonna come out real quick and change the batteries on your mic just to, just to be safe. Okay. Gene Martin, everybody. Gene's gonna make an appearance. Say hi, Gene Martin. <laughs> Gene Martin, the audio apartment located in Burbank, for all your audio needs. He'll take care of you. He's got a great group of sound mixers. Our good friend Lincoln, Lincoln Morrison. If you're watching Lincoln, we miss you. He moved to Boston, um, back home to be with his family. We love you, Lincoln. Hope you're watching, buddy. Miss you. I'm just watching the chat in the platform right now. You know, Milan, you're asking, you're talking about you know, kind of catching up to speed. It seems like you're in a in a place where you got to make a decision. You got to figure out what you want to do next. You you know whether you stay with what sounds like it might be a steady job, steady paycheck, that kind of thing, or jump in the filmmaking freelance space. 
I definitely did that. I was in that space, you know, 12, 13 years ago when I was in my early 20s, made that, took that risk. Fortunately, my employer kind of helped me make that risk. You know, the job I was working on, I was producing a uh, in-house TV show in the NHL. Jo- show got canceled, and I went freelance. Um, just bet on yourself. You're betting, it's at the end of the day, you're betting on yourself. And if you believe you can do it and you're hungry enough and you're willing to put in the hours, you know, you do it. Like myself and Kurt. Kurt, you see him right now holding the movie. He and I were here for 14 hours yesterday to make sure that every single thing was dialed in, you know, for all the wiring and all the cables and all the stuff as far as the video feeds and all that stuff. It's, that's just that's what is required sometimes. You make that choice, you know, and I think if you can go into it with that mindset of, I'm willing to work hard. I'm willing to do all those things. You're going to get jobs because people will recognize that because at the end of the day, you're you're linking up with people that are going to hire you because they, A, want to be your friend. They, B, they want to spend 12 to 16 hours a day with you. And if you can bust your ass and show that you can work, you will rise the ladder. You'll be, you know, even if you're like, oh, I don't, you know, I want to be a DP at some point or I, I need to take a couple steps back because we're in a new market. It will happen. I promise you, it'll happen. Bet on yourself. You gonna do anything, Shane, or are we just gonna look at an empty room? What's going on? I'm getting bored. (laughs) You ready? All right. Uh, We're not ready. Hold on. Hold on. Wait on audio. Just. I gave him all that press, and then Gene looked at me, and he's like, hold on, buddy. I need I need to check something. <laughs> One second. We just got to check your mic again. No problem, Milan. To put it in perspective, 12 years ago, I drove from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to come work for Shane for free when he was having an unpaid internship for college students. I was not in college. I had paid my way to go to NAB to meet him in person, to get to know him, to get in front of him, because I knew it was going to help me make the steps I wanted to take in my career. I spent every last dime to get out of here, drove to Fifth Street downtown, did not have a place to sleep. I was ready to sleep in my car. Not that I'm saying you have to do that, but I had made the decision for myself that this is where I wanted to go. I wanted to make that move, and I was willing to do whatever it took. He didn't know that. He had no idea. Is Yeah, if you want to come out from Pittsburgh, great. Sure. You know, and it worked for me. I'm still involved with this company. I've, you know, I had since left. I came back in 2021. You know, just we were able to work some stuff out, and I shoot full-time. I leave on Monday to go to Canada. I'm shooting a com- another commercial for Coffee Mate. And, uh, yeah, very fortunate. I've had a lot, of, a lot of success, and I'm still young in my career. I haven't hit 40 yet. My life is over at 40. I'm only going to be 37. Just kidding. <laughs> Nobody take that seriously. I'm trying to fill dead air. It's like being on radio. Just making jokes. But in all seriousness, you find your breaking point. You find the position of how far you're willing to go for yourself and everybody's different. Not saying you have to be willing to work for free, you have to be willing to sleep in your car, those kinds of things. But I was in that place in my life where I was willing to do that. And sometimes you don't have to go that far, you know. So, yeah, just to do your thing. Do you. Don't worry about anybody else. Do you. We're ready. I think we're good. <laughs> All right. Okay. You ready, Kurt? You ready, Brendan and Steve? Yeah. Napolitano. Get that uh, screaming 180 on me. Oh, you got a 50? That's bullshit. No, I'm just kidding. All right. You ready, Dave? 
<laughs> Take it away, Shane. It's all yours. The floor all right, is yours. Here we friend. go. So now we're in our fluorescent lit environment. So I've turned on all the fluorescents that we have within this office. And we've put uh, our uh, our beautiful actors over here, Kira and Soyana, underneath one of these lights, as well as we're angling a little of the beadboard bounce into their eyes to fill in the shadows. So what we're going to do on this is we're going to do a LUT that makes it neutral. Okay, uh, this is LED. I think, uh, let me see what my color temp is on this. I did all this calculation. Uh, so the LED, so this is 4282. So let's set our cameras to 4200 Kelvin. Okay, that, that way will, and it has a little, um, now I'm saying 2.0 magenta here. Uh, so it's saying that there's a little, I need to add magenta. So there's a little green in it. Yeah. So what I want to do uh, with this is our whole mission is to make this look so it doesn't look green and it has a really kind of uh, contemporary kind of office space look. Uh, not muddy, got good contrast, and that's what we're trying to build off of this CDL LUT. All right, so let's start to work on that. So I want to take the green out. I want to make it nice and clean and white. Uh, it, if anything, a slightly colder. So I would say, let's go 4,000 Kelvin to start. Uh, so immediately we have a slightly cooler tone. There we go. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's pretty good. Okay. Now, uh, what? Block that light for a second for me, um, real, just so I can see what that looks like. Here's our beauty of our quacker clamp. Okay, great. So now you can see how much that was doing. So the additive quality of this light, like now look how, uh, you know, skull eyed they are. So let's back up just a little bit, ladies, just a little bit more. There you go. So you can get underneath this light a little more. Great. Okay. All right. Uh, now let's uh, open that light up a little bit. Give me 50, 50 on that. Okay. All right, let's uh, stop down uh, a half stop. Did you do that, uh, Sam? Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, that makes it dead. Go back to a four. Yeah, I think that's. That's heavy. That's a, that's a four. Yeah. Go to two eight or four and a third. Okay. And. Let's just push the contrast a little bit. Yeah. So stretch it a little more white and a little more black. I guess the question is just whether or not you want to twist down any of those tubes in the background on that white wall. Again, just a reminder, A camera, lights, primes. B camera, well, I, I think Ajino we'll Octopus. On the, uh, when you go in for the close up, you know, and we'll do this and then we'll manicure it. Oh, <coughs> good on the contrast one more. So there's off and there's on. Uh, split the difference on the contrast? Yeah, so you back off. There you go. There's off, there's on and there's off. On, okay. off. All right. 
So now uh, we're going to do a little focus poll here. Uh, so, uh, ladies, I want you to start back there, and then you're gonna you're gonna start you're gonna start here. I just want to see you walk through this environment. So then you'll come in, and then you'll come into here, and nail that mark. Okay. So let me just see you do that before we roll on it, so I can see what that. Now, the one thing that I'm feeling is it just feels too magenta. It, there's yeah. something that it feels too. Okay, all right, ladies, go ahead and walk. Yeah, that feels a little better, cleaner. Great. I don't, I, it doesn't feel green to me. No, so that's good. Okay, so let's match that. Started and there's where we are at right now. Where do we start? Right there. Here's where we're at. Funny, when you go back and forth, then you see the green. And then it becomes a little evident. Yeah. But yeah. But your eye. Some of that's perceptual. Exactly. Your eye is. Especially with this much white in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's roll on this and uh, we'll do the Raptor at the same time and you'll get all set up with your we'll focus marks. Yeah. Are you good? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what you want to do is you want to come over here, <coughs> dive at Kurt, mm -hmm. okay. so it takes it. You take him out, and then he falls on the ground. Right. We've had we've had enough problems with wireless video and focus. <laughs> the last thing I need is and then toss DC a broken. couple of those dust of dawn on him. What do you think, Kurt? To wake him up. You gonna be okay with that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, you good, Sam? <laughs> Fluorescent LED. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Rolling on the Raptor. Got it. Okay, ready and action, ladies. Okay, look left. Look right. And Back to camera and cut. Okay, next camera, go back to one and roll. Got it. Okay, here we go and action. Okay, great. And cut. Okay. All right, nice. So uh, let's, uh, let's go for changing these out. What do you think would be the best? You want to go cool white or should we go warm white? Because this LED is pretty much the same as the cool white that I have up here. Oh, so these are those LED tubes? LED cool whites. Oh, well, so, you want to do warm white? Yeah, let's do warm white. Okay. Although, yeah. I don't encounter a lot of warm white ever. No, I know ever. you're absolutely and it, right. And it's hideous. It is. And that's why you don't encounter it because it's it's mush. Nobody, nobody uses it. You don't want to see it. Yeah. You're never going to see it. So if you're going to do it, do uh, cool white. I'd say cool white. You're going to yeah. see cool white. Cool 99 white. Ninety-nine percent. Okay, yeah. great. So. All right. So let's uh, let's get uh, three ladders in here, and uh, these are all on hinges. They just push on the left and right tab and it the whole egg crate swings down and then we have cool white bulbs in the corner there to regel. 
So I'll get, uh, there's some ladders in the back. Uh, you can follow me. Here you go. Here's a, a three-step. I'll bring. Here's a three-step ladder. Grab that. The Brandon, to answer your question, those um, fluorescents in the ceiling, those are they're not film grade. None of this of what we're doing right now is like film lights. These are like off the shelf, Home Depot, Lowe's, your local department store. You know, the ones in there right now are an LED version, but they were the these are the existing bulbs that come in this facility in which we are located. And now Shane's gonna yeah. take your more traditional yeah, fluorescent tubes, the warm white version, and they're gonna swap them out. Yeah. You can kind of see, I'll cut to the one of the Raptor images right now. Here are the guys are break. You can see in the background, the guys have the, opened up the fixture and they're gonna take the tubes out. You know, you see they're turning off right now and they're gonna pop out. So they're gonna change those to the, f the traditional fluorescent versions. That's kind of the idea with this one. It's it's about going into an existing environment and now you know not having to change everything. You know, and it's you're just using like okay, I need to do a little bit, just not a lot. For example, shameless plug for myself. If you go to my website, I put my link in the chat, uh, David C. Weldon Jr. dot com. There's a spot I did for Kohl's department stores. In that spot, very much like what we're doing right now, I used the existing fluorescent overheads and where there were dark spots, I took a stair of tubes and I matched the color temperature to of the light the pre existing lights to my camera. You know, and I, I had to swing the I don't remember if it was magenta or green or wherever I had to go. And then did the same so with the Asteros and to working. fill it in to make it make it work because there was not enough time and money to change out every single tube in this facility. So that's kind of what Shane's trying to do here. Give you that foundation to play with, and then you can do it on a job and bring in, you know, film lights to supplement when you need to. Whoa! That one just blew too. So you can't try to put it in, right, and then and then have it make contact with the housing at the same time. Yeah. Okay. I'm just letting you know that's that's. Hey, croissant. Saw your your note. Thanks for the compliment. Of, uh, you know, you're in a corporate world. No, Take that knowledge that and information ever. and everything you're learning in that space. That Trust me, it will all apply to anything you do next. Like right now, I wish I had a camera in here to show you what I'm doing. Here. Next time we do one of these, I'm gonna have a camera for my face because I need a little FaceTime. Can't always give it to the boss. But hey, I'm sitting here with a black magic video switcher. I got a video it, board in front of me. My background was live sports in television. Did a lot of, you know, arena football, did some NHL hockey, so maybe, directing maybe games and for scoreboards and for broadcast. You know, I've wife. applied all that to what I do now as a DP. You know, DPing multiple know. cameras these, uh, comes right from that. It's like so I'm, I'm used to sitting in front of, a, you know, sitting next to a technical director that's got 30, 40 inputs of cameras and replay and that kind of stuff. So even in a corporate world, you might like, oh, I do, wow. you know, I'm working for... PNC Bank, and we're doing live shows. This that's like all that stuff applies. The lighting applies. Everything. The editing. Everything. All of it applies. No matter what you're going to try to do. Yeah. No. Well, I thought they probably did. I did put the warm whites and the cool whites in there, and it all worked great. And then these are blowing, so I did it on this fixture. So maybe that was. Hey, Luca, to answer your question, right, the well reason the why the you're only seeing in. the focus reading on the yeah. XL is because that camera allows for the readings to go through because it's a native mount. Just remember DSMC2, okay. you were able to have that native mount with the eye technology going between the mount. Right, with the, I, I can't, I don't want to say this for sure because you know, obviously I don't work for RED, but the RF mount native to the V Raptor in the Komodo, the only time you're going to get any sort of readings like that that'll pass through is you're using native RF lenses. So we're using an RF to PL passive dummy adapter, so to speak, in how we're handling the uh, the V Raptor. So it's not going to pass that eye technology of T stop focus okay. information, anything that's available <laughs> coming from the lens. 
So even if it is available, it won't pass through on a passive mount. That's weird because I blew the shit out of this thing. So. Okay, so you put the back and they're still not coming out. Hey, Ryan, I hear you. Uh, you're talking about you started working for a job filming and, you know, a company that, you know, just doesn't have that strength in pre-production. You know, obviously everybody's scenario is different, but this is where things like this where you can take that time if you have the time and if you have the resources, you know, maybe if you're in a situation where you're like, ah, I just don't have the cameras or I don't have the lenses, try to work with a local rental house. Or maybe you can try to work on building these kinds of LUTs and finding some local people, you know, that were willing to work with you. It's like you want to have a local colorist or something like that that's looking to improve their game, that kind of stuff. Just throwing out ideas, obviously, just reading your brief comment, just <laughs> something popping in my head and making my own space of what you might be dealing with. But, um, but yeah, hope things get better. Hope, hope the pre-production process gets better. Hope you're able to fund that, and it makes for a more enjoyable experience for you. Thank you for that note, Phil. Uh, yeah, I haven't been able to keep up to date with all the cool shit that Red's dropping. But I thought I'd seen some stuff about some Red-produced adapter mounts that can do a lot more than what's, you know, when you say first party, it's coming from Red versus third party. If it's, I think this one's Hot Rod Camera, the one we have, which is a solid mount, but it's just a passive mount. And obviously they're expensive to make and, you know, have that electronics and stuff. All right, I got good news and bad news, everybody. This We're going to move into a Q&A because we discovered that the fixtures we have in-house cannot accept the fluorescent tube, so we're not going to be able to do that portion and show you guys that today. It's, we're so sorry. Um, we just made an assumption, made a mistake. Mistakes happen. It's okay. But we're going to open on the floor up to a question and answer. If you got any questions, we'd love to give you some answers. And we're coming to uh, coming to camera three. Say hi, Sweeney. <laughs> um, trying to, we don't have any questions yet because obviously everybody's a little bit behind us. Yeah. Why don't you uh, let me fire up my top source here. Unless you want to be over here, Sweeney, and then look that way. So, yeah, okay, go that way, Kurt. Go over there and shoot this way. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got our first question in. 
What's uh, your favorite? What are your favorite go-to lenses? Top three. Top three go-to lenses would be probably the Panavision Primos, uh, the Zeiss Mark II Ultra Speeds, and the uh, Leica Summicrons. Those are uh, my three that I absolutely love shot. Uh, let's see, on the Zeiss Mark II Ultra Speeds, I shot Greatest Game Ever Played, We Are Marshall, and Semi Pro. Uh, I was using those that lens technology of the late 50s, early 60s to be able to uh, create that kind of um, you know, older look of the glass and, and not so uh, great on the coatings and more flaring and, and uh, softer in tonality and softer in contrast. Uh, I've done the Summa Luxes for uh, a lot. I also love the Cook S4s and the Cook S5s, and now I think they have the S7s out. Uh, and uh, I love cooked glass. It's very creamy. It's, it's got a, a, a very unique quality because it's creamy but sharp. So it's got a softness but a sharpness at the same time. I, I don't know how it does it, but that's what I feel when I see that glass. I, always, I said three, not 12. Yeah. Just well, kidding. the other thing is I apologize for uh, the lighting snafu. Uh, the, yesterday when I was in here, I did that light specifically right above me, and I put all the cool white fluorescents in it, all the warm whites. I actually got all the XY values in my, uh, in my phone uh, to prove that. But, uh, of course, you know, here's my cool white. Here's my warm white. But, of course, uh, you know, I didn't check those back fixtures that seemed to be supercharged. Yeah, now we're, <laughs> now we're popping breakers. Yeah. We already um, popped gotta... the breaker in the back. And I'm so proud of my FA team for popping breakers. That's when you know you're doing the right thing when you start blowing shit up. Okay? It's like we always, this is, you got to blow stuff This is not an endorsement up. to blow things up. <laughs> it can get me in trouble somehow. I know this is going to happen. <laughs> I got a question from Milan. Milan's been a great viewer, great member here on the yep. platform, and I, I want to get their question. Um, what's the best way to make connections with people in the industry and network? First thing that pops to my mind is a story you tell all the time about that young man that you helped kind of get out of the rental house game in some ways. I think there's a connection there. Yeah, so it, it's funny because I had a great one-on-one -on -one mentor call with a uh, Filmmakers Academy member in Australia. And um, he said, Shane, I've been doing everything you've told me to do. I started a rental house, you know, I, I know all the gear, I'm really pumped, but I'm, I'm, I'm just not going anywhere. And I said, well, where are you? He goes, I'm at the rental house. I go, well, how long have you been there? He goes, five years. I go, dude, you've been four years there too long. And he goes, oh no. I said, it's no problem. We're gonna get you out of there this week. I said, do you have anyone coming in? He goes, yeah, there's a big prep going on that I'm the head prep tech on, and they're going out on this, this six months television series. I go, okay, what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach out to your marketing person uh, at uh, the camera rental house, and you're gonna find out who the key first uh, key assistant is, and you're gonna get his information. Then you're gonna call that person up, and you're gonna say, hey, John, I am your prep tech, and I just wanted you to know that I've lined all the cases out for your prep. I've also gone in all the filters you have. I've already made Velcro tabs for all of your map boxes. I've labeled all of your cases with close focus and the T-stop, and you're all ready to go. I wanted to find out what you like in your coffee, and uh, can I send anyone over to pick up any of your carts for the prep? And, um, you know, what do you like for breakfast? And he, the, the assistant that he was having the conversation with completely opened up to him. And uh, he came in, the, the prep tech had done all that extra work that normally they do not do. And that key first grabbed that prep tech and took him out of that environment that the end of the prep. 
So these are the things that you can do to set yourself apart from everyone else. I'll never forget on how I got on my first movie. I was working at a lighting and grip rental house. And one of the producers was coming in and meeting with the marketing person. And they had kind of an overwatch on the whole parking lot. And while he was having this conversation, they were watching me run across the parking lot. And they're like, who the hell is that guy? And they go, it's this crazy dude from Boston. He just got here and he just runs circles around everyone. I just don't, I, I tell him to slow down. I tell him to not run, but the guy's just a, he just is a scrapper. He wants to, he loves this industry. Well, that producer saw that initiative, walked down, pulled me aside and said, do you want to do your first feature film? as a grip truck driver. And I was like, yes. And he goes, it means you have to leave this company, leave the job that you have. And I'm like, I'm out of here. So I literally went up to the guy, Ron, and I said, Ron, thank you so much, but I'm going to go with Roberto and I'm going to work on his next movie. Uh, so, you know, it's just putting yourself out there and always trying to do stuff that is over and above what everyone else in the playing field is doing. This is how you set yourself apart. It's, it's absolutely crucial for you to do that. All right, what else we That's got, great. David? Um, we got a question from Croissant. Uh, what are your thoughts on manufacturer supplied LUDs versus making your own? Are there certain things to look out for when using a manufacturer LUT? Yeah, the biggest thing with manufactured LUTs is you gotta be able to find out what the source is, right? Is it on Rec 709? Dan, what are the, spit out the color spaces that can be. Yeah, if it's red, it's red white gamut. If it's airy, you know, log B, airy white gamut. Right, but good. there's P2 oh, color yeah, space. Yeah. There's, you know, all yeah. those different color spaces that it's built on, yeah, yeah. right? Exactly, yeah, it should be built off the camera log you're working with. Whatever the A camera is, you should be having a LUT specifically for that camera. Exactly. And the, the other thing is, is just like Dave Cole and I were talking about all these movie LUTs that you find. You think you're going to just download that movie LUT and slap it on your camera and it's going to look like Blade Runner 2049. Uh, sorry, that's not going to happen. Uh, there is so much finesse that goes in. When I'm building these LUTs with Dave Cole, I will sit there for hours dialing it in, getting the nice color separation, pushing cyan into the shadows, uh, balancing the highlights, mids, and, and, and blacks. This is something that just buying something on the internet, unless it comes like all the, the LUTs that we have on uh, the Filmmakers Academy, it tells you what it was shot at, what the color space is on, what, what er it tells you everything detail so you can set your camera up so you can actually get those exact results. Very cool digging around i'm looking i'm looking i'm looking uh talk about a little bit what's your marshall asked what's your favorite remote heads i'm specifically thinking of situations where it would be dangerous to put a human operator into yeah remote heads i mean i have really fallen into loving the ronin uh i've been using that uh, slapping it on the dolly uh crane uh you know a pickoff catch and release where it comes off of the crane and goes on to handheld the ronin has become my go to um, remote head uh, on set. Uh, secondary, I would go with the Libra and uh, the uh, flight heads uh, are gonna be uh, great remote heads. The Scorpio head is a great uh, head, but uh, you know, with just normal ma movie making, not uh, you know, doing uh, the Matrix or the Maximus head, any of these things, you know, the Ronin is gonna get that done. Uh, if you need, um, you know, motion control tracking and all this data and stuff, then you got to go to the uh, higher budget uh, remote heads to be able to do that. But the flight head I used, I'll never forget the day on Into the Blue. We were out, we were doing 30 knots chasing this uh, boat in Into the Blue. And uh, the seas were crazy. They were three, three foot seas. So imagine this. This Corinthian, which was a catamaran with a 40 person crew with a 30 foot techno crane and a 20 foot Foxy and a 14 film camera package on it, all moving at that speed. 
and I was watching the crane doing this and the flight heads going like this. And then I'm looking at the image and it's like, foosh, rock solid. It was like, I was like, what is this head? You know, I was just mesmerized it by it. And, you know, this is where the whole gimbal technology and everything has really gone to the stabilized heads are just absolutely phenomenal. All the Russian arm work that I did on Need for Speed, you know, I use the flight head as well. Uh, that, that head is the most robust head out there in regards to just getting in there on the action. And then the cool thing with that is it also has this cool um, shaker box that uh, they designed specifically with Filmotechnic. They're one of the best ones that have the shaker box and it goes in and it shakes uh, up, down, it goes diagonal and you can make it so it really has that action. We use that a lot on Need for Speed to create that intensity of the high speed chase by just using the shaker box. Last question. This is going to take us home because we're running okay, out of media space question. and my server is going to be full if I don't <laughs> cut. Okay, so what would you consider to be the most like crucial thing for someone who's shooting their first feature film? What's going to be the, the thing they need to pay attention to the most? Shooting your first feature film, it is all about prep. Preparing yourself so your team preparing prep with the director, with the production designer, all the different departments, so you can communicate that one vision uh, is the most important thing you can do, uh, specifically on your first movie. Uh, when I started out, I really didn't understand how to prep. I had just done commercials and music videos. Now, over the 30 years of shooting features, my prep process is legendary, like it, is so specific to exactly what every moment of the day my grip electric and camera teams will need as well as the art department as well as which direction we're shooting uh, it's very detailed so i would say if you're shooting your first movie and they only are going to pay you two weeks of prep you donate six weeks of your time uh, i remember on on uh, terminator salvation i donated 12 weeks of my time uh, to be able to do that movie. Um, and these are the kind of things that you have to do as an artist, especially when you're starting out. You need to make a mark, and a lot of the times uh, the resources are not there to set you up for success. So like I, I've told this story many times, I've gone through my whole 30 some odd year career of being a cinematographer, and I have to say I've probably worked seven years for free. So understand that that is part of the process so you can do these things uh, to prepare yourself uh, to actually knock it out and make a mark on that first feature. That's what I did on the Rat Pack. That was my coming out party and I came in trying to be as prepared as possible, not knowing all what I know now, but knowing enough to really prepare myself and Rob Cohen, our director, to knock that out of the park. That's it, my friend. All right. That's a wrap. Well, thank you so much, everyone. This has been an incredible experience. Thank you to all of my crew. You guys have just rocked it out today. It's been wonderful seeing faces, specifically John Guerra, my gaffer, that I have not seen in a long time, and all our FA members. Come on out here. Uh, I want to introduce you all. Uh, so we have Steve. Yep. We have okay. Steve. And Chris, and Andre. Uh, Andre, Andre, and Andrew, Andrew. <laughs> Andre, and Andrew, and Pierre. Pierre. So these are our FA members that signed up and uh, enabled us to be able to pull off the vision for all of you. Uh, you'll be seeing a lot of that. Uh, in the course that we build with all the exterior stuff because we were flying 12 by 12 solids and bleach muslins and diffusions and all that stuff outside. So thank you so much for coming. And again, to my whole crew and all our sponsors, uh, uh, thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Thank everybody for watching. Thank you so much for being a part of all this. Just as a reminder, 
Uh, if you're not a member, sign up today. Learn more about it. Just those five members came. We always like to invite members. Uh, you know, as a part of their membership, we try to put it out to where we bring whatever we can handle, more or less. You know, we were going to be in a tighter space today. We had some limitations on the you know property that allows how many people we could have. So we were able to bring in five members to come just be a part of it, ask questions, meet people, network, all that kind of stuff. So if you're not doing able, able to do it online, you can do it in person too with us. Um, we appreciate you. Thank you so much for uh, for attending and watching, and we hope you learned something. Reach out, hit us up, find Shane on Instagram, send him messages, ask him questions, bug shit out of him. He loves it. He's always here to help. Thank you. Good night.